Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, one suspect is in critical condition at the hospital after opening fire against two San Antonio Police Department officers. The latest details from Chief McManus coming up just ahead on GMSA. And since the pandemic hit here in Bear County, we have more than 27,500 cases of COVID-19. 240 people have died. We have the latest details and the tentative plan going forward. The San Antonio Metropolitan Health uh, Medical Director, Dr. Jun Wu, issued a health directive requiring that schools not reopen for on-campus face-to-face instruction until after September 7, 2020. And we have the latest details on a new school health directive, what it means for families, students, and teachers getting ready for the fall semester. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's 74 degrees, <laughs> get excited. Our Sarah Spivey will let you know about, I don't know, maybe cooler temperatures? Maybe. I'm, I'm being optimistic. Until we talk to Sarah, good morning. It is six o'clock this Saturday, July 18th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And okay, Sarah, I walked outside yesterday at the mm -hmm. mill around five o'clock and I was just like, it's it feels cooler like there's a little bit of a breeze yeah and I made the mistake of asking earlier was this a cool a cool front yeah no it actually wasn't a cool front but a lot of people did report very gusty winds in the afternoon that's because that was an outflow boundary from some storms along the coastal plain so we got the cooler air from that briefly but we still got up to 101 yesterday so yeah it was hot yesterday it's gonna stay hot today too but we may just miss out on the triple digits Keep your fingers crossed right now outside. It's 74 degrees at the airport. Now that's substantial, even though it's muggy out there and it doesn't feel cool outside. 74 degrees is actually the coolest we have been since June 26th. So yeah, a little bit of a nicer morning this morning than the last few mornings. 71 in Bulverde, 71 in Bandera, 71 in Tarpley, 72 in Kerrville, 68 degrees at Bernie Stage Airfield. And today it's Saturday, so if you have some lawn work that you want to do, yard work that you want to do, it's going to be a good day to do that, especially in the morning hours. You know, we'll be in the 80s for most of the morning, so really not too bad. A muggy, though, of course. We'll have partly cloudy skies and a 10% chance for a stray shower shower or storm. It is not going to be widespread rain by any means. There's still 90% chance that you won't get rainfall, uh, but it is out there and we should stay below 100 degrees for the first time in about eight days. So high temperature of 97. It'll still be hot though. That 100 degrees just kind of in your mind <laughs> rather than anything that's going to make it feel different outside. But I'll be back with a look ahead to the rest of the weekend and into next week. See if we have any more heat waves on our way. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in serious condition after exchanging gunfire with two San Antonio police officers on the city's northeast side. This all happened just before 930 last night. Officers called out to an apartment complex in the 3500 block of Canyon Parkway. The call was for family violence. Alicia Barrera joins us live downtown with the latest. So Alicia, any word on those officers' conditions? Well, they're both OK. Both of these officers were able to quickly take cover and avoid being shot by the bullets that just kept flying in. And the only person who was actually injured during this crossfire was the suspect himself. We know that he's listed in critical condition at University Hospital. That's according to Chief McManus. And again, this happened around 920 last night. According to Chief McManus, that suspect's injuries are non-life threatening. And here's what we know about the suspect so far. He's a 27 year old man and was shot about five times by officers last night. And it's actually his girlfriend who called police from their apartment because the man was allegedly beating her. Once the first officer arrived around 920 last night, the woman was on the balcony and let officers know that the man was inside her apartment with a gun and a knife. Moments later, the suspect stepped out on the balcony with a shotgun and began to fire multiple rounds towards the officer. And here's what Chief McManus said happened next. The second officer pulled up and there was a, a lull in the gunfire and he wasn't even aware that there were shots being exchanged and the other officer who arrived first told him to take cover and as soon as he did that the suspect came out from the breezeway came out the door from the breezeway and, and opened fire again on both officers 
There was an exchange of rounds and the officers again were able to shoot that suspect about five times. According to a spokesman for SAPD, officers did perform life saving measures on the shooter before he was taken to the hospital. Again, critical condition at University Hospital. Meanwhile, that uh, victim from domestic violence, the girlfriend who called police, she's OK. She was able to go back inside of the apartment with her two month old baby and take cover. They were not injured. Um, any injuries that she suffered were not related to the shooting and police tell us that she is cooperating with officers for this investigation. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, police investigating gunfire on the east side that ended with a man shot and killed and found right in the middle of the street. So take a look. This was a scene just after 1140 last night. This is the 100 block of Nalina Street. Police say when they got there, they found that man with a gunshot wound to his chest. We now know the victim is 28 year old Justin Johnson. Witnesses on the scene tell police there was an argument between Johnson and the suspect before a gun was pulled and shots rang out. Johnson pronounced dead on the scene. The suspect arrested just a few blocks away. Right now, charges still pending. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. City leaders reporting a decline in hospitalizations and a record high of deaths in the Bear County. During the daily briefing, Mayor Ron Nirenberg announced 11 more people have died, bringing the death toll to 240 people. There are 478 new COVID-19 cases, which brings a total to 27,525 people with the virus. More than 10,000 people have recovered but 1,166 are in the hospital right now. 436 of those people are in the ICU and 298 are on ventilators. Staffed hospital bed capacity is at 11%. And in the midst of this pandemic, we are just a few weeks away from what should be the start of the new school year. We now know the latest school health directive constructed with the input of local stakeholders and local education leaders. So this is the plan right now. There will be remote learning for all students, public and private, until at least September 7th. There will also be no in-person extracurricular activity or athletics until on-campus in-person learning resumes. That includes high school football. In the meantime, school districts are required to come up with a written safety plan with safety and health protocols no later than August 21st. Metro Health Director Dr. Colleen Bridger says the September 7th date is not set in stone. Well, just ahead in our next half hour, we'll take a look at one superintendent juggling his new role as other districts try to figure out their plans for the new school year. Dr. Mark Pui was hired as the new South San ISD superintendent just a month ago. In his first TV interview, he talks to us about his goal, how to support teachers during this difficult time. Well, Brooke Army Medical Center is taking more trauma patients to ensure its trauma response remains unaffected by the pandemic. Right now on KSAT.com, you can learn about how BAMC is helping San Antonio in its fight against COVID-19 with its oxygenation program. And you can also find details about the medical procedure that's being used as an alternative to putting someone on a ventilator. Just, to he just head over to our website at KSAT.com and you'll find this story on the homepage. And your morning headlines, the professional football team formerly known as the Washington Redskins. They have made a public statement, but this one, nothing to do with being forced to change the Redskins name and their logo. It has everything to do, though, with women who have come forward with sexual harassment and toxic workplace allegations against team staff members. The Washington Post reports as many as 15 women come forward saying these alleged incidents happened between 2006 and 2019. And already two staff members have been fired and one had retired. Now, since the allegations came to light, Snyder, who owns the team, hired legal staff to conduct an independent review of team policies and investigate these allegations of workplace misconduct. And the NFL issuing a statement saying it will also meet with the lawyers following the investigation and they will act accordingly. So let's take a look. This is what the owner had to say in part. The behavior described in yesterday's Washington Post article had no place in our franchise or society. The story has strengthened my commitment to setting a new culture and standard for our team, a process that began with the hiring of Coach Rivera earlier this year. Beth Wilkinson, who will be the legal counsel, and her firm are empowered to do a full unbiased investigation and make any and all requisite recommendations upon completion of her work. We will institute new policies and procedures. If you guys have any more questions about this, you can read all about it right now on KSAT.com.
And time now, 609, 74 degrees out. Taking a look back at the life of a civil rights icon, still ahead on GMSA, the impact U U.S. Representative John Lewis made on millions of people's lives. And we might not crack 100 for the first time in Sarah, what, eight days, you said? Eight consecutive days, but still a good reason to head to the beach this weekend. And if you do, well, don't worry, we have a checklist, some things you need to know before you hit the sand. But let's take a look outside with live cam. 74 degrees, I will take that temperature. Sarah Spivey will let you know about our weekend forecast when you come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. In an effort to reduce the spread of this pandemic, the city of Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, and Padre Island at National Seashore, they are temporarily closing access to vehicles and golf carts. So if you're heading out to the beach this weekend, we want to make sure you're aware of all these changes. The closure is in effect on North Beach and South Beach throughout July until 6 a.m. on Saturday, August 1st, unless extended. And pedestrian access is still allowed on Bird Island Boat Ramp and Malakit Beach. And City of Rockport also ordering that no vehicles be driven on the beach or boat ramp. Officials say the new order begins tomorrow and it will last until August 1st. So if you're planning on heading out there, you must park on the fairgrounds located near the beach area. This is in Rockport. Anyone who is caught violating the order faces a Class C misdemeanor. And if you are headed to the beach this weekend, make sure you plan ahead. There's a lot to keep in mind for you and your family to be safe during your visit. For example, if you are going to South Padre Island, there's a limit on gatherings for up to 10 people. Beach setups have to be at least 15 feet apart and only single pole umbrellas are allowed mm. with a two chair limit. Also on some beaches, concession stands, bathrooms and showers could be off limits. So make sure to check before you leave your house. If you have any questions, we have all of that right now and we have some webcams that give you a little preview of the beaches around Texas, just head to KSAT.com. All right, guys, so when you head to the beach, what is your to-go, must-have thing? Must-have thing at the beach? Must-have thing oh, at the beach. Oh, sunscreen, yeah, for sure. Yeah, sunscreen. Okay, aside from all the precautions and you being smart. Scooby. Scooby, all oh, right. Her Scooby. dog. Yeah. That's fair. He, he would get so upset if I went to the beach without him. We're going to talk about the Spurs and Scooby later. All right. That's a perfect how, tease. How about watermelon? Ooh. Uh, watermelon uh, earrings and watermelon. refreshing, Sarah Spivey. Yeah. Hey, if you are going to ghost tonight, to going to the coast. You're ghosting the coast today? Ghosting the yeah. coast. If you're going to the coast this weekend, there is going to be a small chance for an isolated shower storm just about every day. Uh, but here in San Antonio, it has been dry as a bone. In fact, we are on, this would be our 22nd consecutive day without rain. We have had 21 days without rain. Rain is measured at the air, airport, so official rainfall. Uh, there's been nothing at the airport so far. And now we did have a couple of pop-up isolated showers yesterday for some lucky folks, especially if you were closer to the coast. And today there's going to be a chance for rain along the coastal plain. Here's a look at today's rainfall potential for areas like Beeville, Corpus Christi, Victoria, right along that coastal plain. There's a 20% chance for a pop-up shower or storm. One or two of those may make it to that I-35 corridor. So that's why there's about a 10% chance to see rain in San Antonio today, but that is measly, my friends. A 10% chance of rain, mm, not good odds in our favor for that rainfall. Now, our weather pattern is pretty interesting. Now, over the last several days, we have had extreme heat. That heat high, which was really buckling down on us over the last few days has moved off to the north and we're actually looking at a little bit of a wave in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's producing some good showers out in the RGV right now and this is going to be the source of that coastal shower storm that may develop and pop up near San Antonio otherwise the heat high is the main factor in our weather however it has moved on up to the north and I'll show you future high temperatures today, you can see where that heat is really concentrated in the panhandle of Texas. 102 for the high in Amarillo, 100 in Midland, Odessa, near 100 in Lubbock. Here in San Antonio and across South Central Texas, we'll actually be in the mid to upper 90s today. So if we don't hit 100, that would be the first day we're not at 100 in eight days. Right now outside, we are seeing a few morning clouds out there, and it's actually fairly comfortable outside. 
side. A little bit on the humid side, but not too bad. In fact, this morning low of 74 so far is the coolest we've been since June 26th. It's about 21 days right there. So it's 69 degrees in comfort, 72 in Tarpley. Wake up temperature in Hondo is 73, 72 at, at JBSA Randolph, 75 in New Braunfels. And on the future cast, it does show one or two of those pop up showers or storms. But notice how isolated it is in San Antonio. It's just not going to happen for all of us today. What is going to happen is the heat. Even though we're not going to be at 100 degrees, it's still going to feel hot. Uh, 95 for the high. Valley 99 in Carrizo Springs, probably going to get up to 100 out toward Del Rio and Carrizo Springs later on today. 95 in Gonzales, 97 in New Braunfels, and 94 in Beeville. So today's forecast feeling good in the morning. Get outside, have your cup of coffee this morning. Go for a walk this morning with the family or uh, with your close uh, social group there. Uh, and then in the afternoon, that's when we'll introduce that small chance for a stray shower or storm, but still going to be partly cloudy and hot. 97 for the high south southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then look at this forecast. I mean, not much is going to change over the next seven days. We're kind of going to be coasting in the mid to upper 90s. Rain chances are not looking great either. We'll have daily coastal showers. Uh, and then by Friday, there are some hints that we could see another round of isolated showers and storms. Right now we're going 20%, but let's keep our fingers crossed for the atmosphere to work a little in our favor. It would be nice to break this chain of consecutive days days without rain. Right, Max and Sarah? That's right. It's funny because every time you say like a low percentage of those showers, I'm like, oh, perfect. I get a car wash and I always hit that low percent. Just go <laughs> get your car wash so we can get some rain, Max. That's exactly what Sarah would say. 619, 74 degrees out. Well, it's Saturday and that means Texas Eats. Next on GMSA, David Elder gives us an inside look from Longhorn Cafe and their Beaumont Burger. Mm. All right, time to take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, one, three, fireball zero. Daily four, five, eight, seven, five, fireball zero. Catch five, four, eight, 25, 28, 35. And Mega Millions, 12, 13, 21, 46, 57. Bonus ball, 21, Mega Flyer, three. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is Saturday, you know what that means? What does that mean? It means we got Texas Eats today. You can catch our local celebrity foodie, David Elder. He really is a celebrity. 10 a.m. and 11 p.m. tonight. Oh, my gosh. When, when I say I'm from KSAT, people are like, oh, do you know David Elder? I'm like, yes, I do. He's a big deal. Well, in this <laughs> clip, our famous David Elder is at Longhorn Cafe talking with Paul Rear about the Beaumont Burger. Yeah, this is our bold Beaumont barbecue burger. Great it looks burger. Absolutely incredible. We just got voted best onion rings in San Antonio, hand breaded. This is the combo. What you you got to try the best onion rings in San Antonio, and you got to try this new burger. People love Longhorn Cafe. You ask them, what's the best burger spot in San Antonio? Guarantee you, eight out of 10 people, they're going to drop the Longhorn Cafe. It's just iconic. We now have 18 burgers and nine locations and building our 10th. This is a great blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good burger, man. This that is, is a solid, home, man. It's a home run, brother. Yo, oh my gosh. That tastes like you're eating a, like a barbecue sandwich. There you go. That's what we want. Crispy bacon, but you, nobody wants chewy bacon. Nope. You got the perfect little piece of the onion in there as well. Nice crispy on the outside. And the patty itself, great flavor. It's a special formulation we had done uh, with Friedman Meats out of Dallas. We tend to go to the juicier side. Oh, yeah. Fresh, never frozen. Fresh, and then never the buns. frozen. Look at that. They have like sourdough bun. We put it on the grill. It, it's so good when you get all that juice to get absorbed into the bun. Just makes it for a better whole mouth feel. That looks so good. You've been there before. Yeah, I have one right by my house. Nice. What's your go-to order? <laughs> Max is making fun of me. It's a chicken <laughs> salad. And, I, and I'm, I'm <laughs> I love burgers and stuff, but they're, I'm telling you, they're chicken salad. So there you go. Longhorn That's Cafe, good. the burgers are great. Don't sleep with the chicken salad. <laughs> there you go. 625, 74 degrees out. A World War II veteran receives the honor of a lifetime. Coming up after the break, why he was recently knighted by Queen Elizabeth. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. So remember this guy? He is the 100-year-old British World War II veteran. He raised $40 million from the National Health Service 
Now he is officially a knight. Remember Captain Tom Moore walked in his garden to raise the money as a challenge for his birthday. And as you see in this picture, the queen making her first public appearance in months for this special occasion. Captain Moore, now a knight, was said, quote, he was absolutely overwhelmed about meeting her. He worried though, oh he's so cute, when he knelt down he wouldn't be able to get back up. Oh, fortunately he was allowed to stand for the rest of the ceremony. This story just gets better and better. Captain Moore, thank you so much for everything you've done. And our World War II veterans, they just keep giving back. True. All right, 629, 74 degrees out. A San Antonio woman who tested positive for COVID-19 learned she was pregnant the very same day. In our next half hour, we have her story and her plans for giving birth still ahead on GMSA. And also... It is time to talk hoops and talk the Spurs, talk the tip off of the restart of the NBA season. Less than two weeks away, we have the latest on how our silver and black are preparing. And the latest details involving the upcoming school year, what parents need to know as remote learning continues. Good morning and welcome back. 632 this Saturday morning, July 18th. Have you been outside recently? It feels pretty good. Right now it does. Were you outside yesterday or the day before or the day before or okay, eight days before? Okay, I get it. But I want to say last <laughs> night around, you mm -hmm. know, we had those nice winds come, uh, that blew in, according to Sarah Spivey. But Sarah, you have our nice river walk forecast. Yeah, you know, it's the weekend, so people do like to go walking along the river walk or park, so we've got to look ahead to that. Uh, but first, I do want to take a look at current temperatures. We're at 74 degrees at the airport right now. Uh, meanwhile, it's uh, 68 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 71 in Bandera, 70 in Lost Maples, and 74 at Port SA. So here's that river walk forecast that we were promising a little bit earlier. Well, it's partly cloudy. It'll be a partly cloudy day with only a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm, but still uh, going to be hot. We may not hit 100 today. We're going for a forecast high of 97. If we don't hit 100, that'll be the first day in eight days that we haven't seen 100 degrees at the airport officially in San Antonio. Southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. And Sarah hinted at it earlier. Uh, there's going to be a nice breeze in the evening hours, so it's going to feel great if you want to sit out on the patio sit out on the porch with your family. Uh, pretty nice in the evening hours, just very toasty in the afternoons. I've got more details on that small chance for rain today coming up in a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. On the city's northeast side, Police Chief William McManus says many rounds of gunfire were exchanged after a suspect opened fire against two officers. The officer involved shooting happened last night around 920 in an apartment complex on the 3500 block of Canyon Parkway. That's near Bolverde Road. The officers avoided injury and the suspect is in serious condition at the hospital. Our Alicia Barretta, she is live downtown. Alicia, what do we know about this officer involved shooting? Well, the officers we know have been with the San Antonio Police Department for eight and the other for 11 years. And this morning we're still waiting to learn their names. But at the scene, Chief McManus tells us that this could have been much worse. It was a very, very close call because of the amount of gunfire that was exchanged. And the situation was so dangerous that thankfully, um, but thankfully, both officers were able to react quickly, take cover, and they're both at home safely. The two officers arrived separately to the scene and were responding to a call for domestic violence. The first officer arrived around 920 and made contact from the parking lot with a woman who had called police and she was on her balcony at that time. She told the officer her boyfriend was armed with a knife and a gun inside the apartment. McManus says the suspect then stepped out to the balcony and fired towards the officer with a shotgun. There was a slight break during the gunfire and that's when the second officer arrived, unaware of what had just happened. The second officer was told to take cover, which he did. And in that same moment, the suspect came out of his apartment and opened fire once again, this time from the breezeway. Here's what we know now about the suspect and the victim of domestic violence that reported him. Suspect was 27 years old. His partner was 20, is 22 years old. There was also a two month old baby in, in the house when this was occurred in the apartment when this occurred. The officers were not injured. One officer has eight years on, the other officer has 11 years on and uh, no one else was injured in, in that exchange of gunfire. 
Both the officers patrol cars were hit multiple times as well as other cars in the parking lot. And according to Chief McManus, there was at least one round that went through the apartment building on the other side of the driveway. And we know that again, the suspect was the only person shot during this crossfire. And Chief McManus says that he was shot up to five times and he's now at University Hospital where he's listed in serious condition. But again, those injuries non life threatening. So he is expected to recover and face charges. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for answers after a woman was found lying in the road with gunshot wounds. Officers on scene tell us they found a woman a little after midnight on Canario and Santiago streets on the city's west side. Police say she was taken to University Hospital in critical condition with gunshot wounds to the wrist and chest. Several people on scene were questioned, but officials were not able to gather any additional information. The incident remains under investigation. Now to the latest in the pandemic, families, students and teachers here in San Antonio, we have a better understanding of what to expect for the beginning of the fall school semester. All of this in the aftermath of our local leaders issuing a new school health directive. So take a look. This is the tentative plan. There will be no face to face learning for both public and private students until at least September 7th. They're going to be going to school remotely. There's also going to be no in person extracurricular activities or athletics until on campus learning resumes. That means no high school football. In the meantime, school districts are required to come up with a written plan with safety and health protocols no later than August 21st. It just gives us a little bit more time to figure out what else we can do and really watch those uh, health numbers to see those indicators, whether they're improving or, or not, um, and gives us some more time to, to figure out here at the local level what makes the most sense. And after that September 7th date, schools can remain remote for four more weeks if they need to, but Dr. Colleen Bridger also says that September 7th date is not set in stone. Well, as school districts work on their plans for the upcoming school year, one superintendent is still adjusting to his new role. Dr. Mark Puig was hired as the new South San ISD superintendent back on June 8th, right in the middle of the pandemic. We're sorry about that. In the first TV interview, he tells us a pandemic has forced him to hit the ground running from day one. His goal is his goal to be real but optimistic as well as deliberate and calm in order to assure parents their kids will be safe. We're going to make sure that every student and every teacher has the, the tools and the resources necessary to execute a virtual environment and thrive in that environment. Puig served as superintendent at Beeville ISD since 2016. He takes over following a shakeup with the district leadership last year. When it comes to next year's budget, he says the district has been prudent with its funding in the past, so he feels confident the district won't be financially compromised. The South San ISD school year is scheduled to start on August 12th. Classes will be all remote learning until further notice. To see all of our back to school coverage, including plans for fall plans for other school districts like NISD and SAISD, just head to KSAT.com and click on the back to school tab. He stood shoulder to shoulder with the legendary Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the civil rights movement. But now a hero of the civil rights movement, U.S. Representative John Lewis has died at the age of 80. ABC's Trevor Ault takes a look back at his life. Civil rights icon John Lewis was born outside of Troy, Alabama in 1940, the son of sharecroppers. As a teenager, he was drawn to activism surrounding the Montgomery bus boycott. During the 1960s, he was at the center of nearly every major moment in the civil rights movement, organizing sit-in demonstrations at segregated lunch counters as a student at Fisk University. He was one of the first freedom riders protesting segregated interstate bus terminals across the South. This photo showing Lewis with a bandage on his head after he and other riders were beaten. Just the beginning of what would be many arrests for the civil rights activists. We must cry and we all must cry together that we want our freedom and we want it now. By 1963, at the age of just 23, alongside Martin Luther King Jr., he was dubbed one of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement who helped plan the historic march on Washington. Let us not forget that we are involved in a serious social revolution. 
Lewis helped spearhead one of the most defining moments of the era, leading more than 600 peaceful protesters across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in 1965. Lewis in the front of the pack for that brutal confrontation with Alabama state troopers, now known as Bloody Sunday. He was struck in the head, suffering a fractured skull at the hands of the police. I was the first one to catch the blow. Lewis was elected to Congress in November of 1986. He served as U.S. Representative of Georgia's 5th Congressional District, where he continued to get into what he called good trouble. I got arrested 40 times during the 60s, and since I've been in Congress another five times. Lewis was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor, in February of 2011. In recent years, he was an outspoken critic of President Trump, skipping the president's inauguration and first State of the Union address. He also took part in widespread protests against the president's zero-tolerance immigration policy. We are getting in good trouble to set people free. I will go to the borders. I get arrested again. Lewis often reminded people to choose love over hate. It doesn't matter whether we are black or white, Latino, Asian American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether we are straight or gay. We are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. It's 643 and 74 degrees. All right, Spurs getting ready for the restart of the 2019-2020 NBA season. Next on GMSA, what DeJounte Murray is telling us when they head back to the court. San Antonio Metro Health has ordered all schools to not allow on-campus activities until September. The latest on what that means for high school football, that's next on GMSA. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 74 degrees out there right now. So if you have stuff to do, do it now before we get hotter throughout the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning and welcome back. 6.46 this Saturday morning. One of the biggest stories this morning, San Antonio Metro Health ordering all public and private schools in Bear County to not allow on-campus instruction or activities until September 7th. That means the first two weeks of a high school football season is out. The Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools delaying the start of their football season until at least September 28th. That decision coming because of this rise in coronavirus cases in the state of Texas. And clearly, it will affect such schools in the San Antonio area as Central Catholic, Antonian, and San Antonio Christian, just to name a few. There is another tidbit. Workouts, they can't begin before September 8th. And the first scrimmage, that can't be held until at least September 21st. As a coach, you're just looking for the opportunities to be with your kids and, and watch the development that comes through athletics. And while we're going to lose some practices in, in the beginning of the season, we are really, really excited to hear that we're still planning to have a season this fall. And the University Interscholastic League, which governs most of the public schools in the state of Texas, is expected to make another announcement this coming Monday. It is time to talk Spurs, and we are all smiles thinking that we are going to have an NBA season. Our San Antonio Spurs tipping off the restart of that 2020 NBA season less than two weeks from today. And in the meantime, they're continuing their workouts inside that NBA bubble. That's at the wide world of sports complex at Disney World. DeJounte Murray telling us he is not afraid of the rush to return to the court after having four months off, even though this is his first season back, but since he blew out his knee back in 2018 and with the Spurs first scrimmage with another team not until next Thursday, DeJounte says just being back on the court with his teammates is good enough for now. Well, I think we're more looking forward to scrimmaging today and days before. Before we get to, you know, actual scrimmage versus another team, I mean, because we're going at it. Uh, you got black, you got silver, they mix it around here and there. But, I mean, we've just been happy to be on the floor. And, you know, we really, we'll really play, what, two, two, three games, and we'll be mad that we can't play more. So I think we're just enjoying the moment, and uh, when the time comes, we'll be ready. And DeJounte's backcourt teammate, Derek White, telling us earlier that during the NBA hiatus, he actually could only play defense against his dog. Derek was asked yesterday how it was getting back to five on five. You can't really duplicate playing five on five. Um, I mean, practice is pick up whatever it is. Um, those little quarantine workouts we're doing at the house. So 
Um, it's always great. We, we love to play basketball, and um, that's what we've been doing since we were young. So uh, we feel comfortable, and um, it's always fun to get back on that court. Silver and Black have the day off. Derek says he is looking forward to their ping pong tournament. So this is what I was talking about, Sarah. If you're playing one-on-one -on -one with your dog, Scooby, who's taking home the W? Oh, Scooby for sure. He's, <laughs> he's definitely a lot quicker and stronger than me. But I want to know what kind of what kind of dog he has. Just got to check his Instagram. Can play. Uh, There's actually some great clips of him playing yeah. literally one on one with his dog. Oh, I'm now obsessed. That's awesome. I actually had the opportunity to dog sit Scooby a little while ago, about a year and a half no. ago, and I can attest he's very big and he's very strong, <laughs> but he's super sweet. Now, if you are planning on taking your dogs for a walk today, do it this morning or later on tonight because in the peak heating hours of the day, it is going to be hot. Take a look at this triple digit heat wave that we've been dealing with. Now, we've had eight consecutive days at or above 100. Our streak started on July 10th when we hit 103 degrees. We topped off at 100. 107 this past Monday on the 13th. That was the hottest July temperature ever recorded. And although we've cooled down a little bit, we've been steadily above 100 degrees again since July 10th, eight consecutive days at or above 100. Will we hit 100 today? I actually don't think we will, and here's the reason why. Our heat high, which was positioned right over West Texas and gave us a lot of heat here in San Antonio, has moved on up to the north. So watch this. All the heat today is going to be around the panhandle, or the high heat at least will be around the panhandle. It's still going to be hot here in San Antonio. We'll be up to 102 in Amarillo, 100 in Midland, near 100 in Lubbock. Here in San Antonio, close to 97 degrees, so a few degrees cooler than that triple digit mark. Now, it's still going to be hot your body doesn't really know the difference between 97 and 100. So keep that in mind. One thing to look forward to if you live along the coastal plain from Howitzville to Victoria to Beeville to Corpus Christi is a small chance, about 20% for an isolated shower or storm. That could also be possible down near Laredo and the RGV. But here in San Antonio, our rain chance today is measly. It's only 10%. We're just not going to see any good, healthy rainfall. Now, yesterday, there were some areas that saw some rain. Uh, and then that created a bit of a gust, a wind gust last night. Maybe you saw the wind gust or were outside at that time. Today, there's less of a chance for that, but it's still possible to get some gusty winds in the afternoon, especially if a storm pops up. But in San Antonio, it's still just going to be hot. High temperatures ranging anywhere from the mid to upper 90s today and a tiny little bit of a heat index value there as well. But we probably will stay below that triple digit mark and end that 100 degree streak. Right now outside, we are mostly cloudy and we've got winds from the southeast at about five miles per hour. It's 74 degrees. Now that is pretty nice, okay? It's still pretty humid outside. Dew points are in the upper 60s, humidity at 85%, but 74 is actually the coolest we've been in the morning in San Antonio officially since June 26th. So if you want to get outside this morning, it's going to be well worth your while. Have your cup of coffee out on the porch or patio. Maybe go for that morning walk uh, with the dog or with your family. 70 degrees at Rock Springs. Wake up temperature in Kerrville, 72. It's 73 increase of spring 74 in Gonzales, 74 in New Braunfels, and we just dropped down to 73 in San Antonio. So today we'll spend most of our morning in the 80s. Going to feel pretty good, a little bit on the muggy side, and then right at around noon we'll start to get up into the 90s, 97 for the high. We'll carry a 10% chance for a stray coastal shower uh, during the day today, but 10% is not a good chance, at least in my book it's not. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour, and then tonight cooling down into the 80s by 10. One thing I want to mention is that there is going to be a little bit of Saharan dust in the air today. Uh, it's not going to be nearly as bad as it was in June, and in fact, it'll dissipate fairly quickly, and in the week ahead, we won't see much. Still, I would like to let you know that the air quality is only going to be moderate today. Now, when we had that first wave of dust in June, it was very unhealthy for just about everybody. And so today it'll only be moderately unhealthy. Basically what that means is if you know somebody who really struggles uh, with respiratory issues, uh, then the air will be moderately unhealthy for them.
that's about it. The rest of us will be okay uh, and we'll carry a chance for coastal showers just about every day. Uh, and look at that. Temperatures are going to be in the mid to upper 90s every day. Fairly steady weather pattern. We'll be keeping our eye on Friday where at least right now it's looking like we could see another round of isolated to scattered showers and storms. Sarah, Max. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. 654, 73 degrees up. San Antonio woman has learned she has COVID and that same day that she is pregnant. Next on GMSA, we share her story and her plans about giving birth. Uh, first, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, one, three, fireball, zero. Daily four, five, eight, seven, five, fireball, zero. Cash five, four, eight, 25, 28, 35. And Mega Millions 12, 13, 21, 46, 57, Mega Ball 21, Mega Flyer 3. Good morning and welcome back. A San Antonio woman who tested positive for COVID-19 also learned she was pregnant the very same day. And now she is planning an at-home birth. Sarah Green says she and her husband both tested positive for the virus back on June 23rd after experiencing symptoms for almost a week. The couple's three young children were not tested, but Green believes they had the virus. Now that everyone has recovered, they are preparing for the newest addition to their family. Green says she hopes her experience with COVID-19 can help other expecting mothers. If you can encourage someone and give someone else hope, um, I think that's more important. University Health System says more pregnant women between the ages of 18 to 40 have been testing positive for the virus. But they want to assure expecting mothers that their hospitals are a safe place to deliver and birthing plans shouldn't change because of the pandemic fears. Time now, 6.59, 73 degrees out. Now here's a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, we are remembering John Lewis, the civil rights leader and congressman whose passing was announced overnight. Tributes from his colleagues on both sides pouring in this morning. We're going to take a look back at his life and his legacy. Plus the coronavirus crisis, new record numbers and more than a dozen states in the so-called red zone for COVID cases. Health officials urging Americans to wear masks and what Trump is saying now about the possibility of a mask mandate. And finally, charges filed, two men facing multiple felonies after a viral video of a group of white men allegedly attacking a black man. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We're going to start this morning with a live look out at the Alamo City. 75 degrees out to start your Saturday. It was 74 earlier. The coolest it's been since I want to say Sarah was telling us June 26th. There we go. She shook her head. Yes, so I'm on the right track. All right. It is 8 o'clock this morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. It is July 18th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And OK, Sarah Spivey, there is a lot of I'm Max. All, well, you're Max. We should see Sarah. But I want to talk to Sarah right now. <laughs> yeah. That hurts a little bit. Well, Sarah was about to talk about something in, in the sky last night. Mm. So we had a lot of calls overnight and even some posts on Facebook uh, about something that looked like a meteorite falling from the sky, and that was probably the case. Now, at first I thought without seeing the pictures or videos, maybe it was some satellites up in space, but after looking at some of the videos, my best educated guess is that there was a meteorite or some space junk that fell from the sky. You know, there's a lot of space junk up surrounding the atmosphere from satellites or things like that. And as it falls through the atmosphere, it burns up and it creates this trail of light. This picture was sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. Now, if you have videos, please post them to the KSAC Connect feature. That's how we can show them on air. So this is a pretty grainy picture, but one that we're grateful for nonetheless, because this happened around two o'clock last night. Again, my best educated guess is probably a meteorite or some space junk that was burning up. And it can be small too and still create a big light show. And I think that was probably the case. 75 right now in San Antonio, 77 in New Braunfels, 75 in Helotus, 71 in Bandera, and 69 in Lost Maples. We got down to 73 earlier this morning. And that's the coolest we've been in about 21 days in the morning hours. So if you do want to head outside today, maybe to the Riverwalk or to your local park, just know that it's going to be a hot one. We're going to see 
see temperatures climb on up to about 97 degrees in the afternoon. If we don't hit 100, that'll be our first day in eight days to not hit 100, and that's what we're forecasting for. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and only a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. So rain chances are not looking good. So I'll be back to tell you what you can expect for the rest of your weekend and into next week coming up in a few. Sarah, Max. Hey, Sarah, new this morning, a shooting on the city's east side ends with one man shot and killed and found right in the middle of the street. Another man, the suspect, now in custody. Police on the scene telling us all of this happened just before 1145 last night. Investigators found the victim, 28 year old Justin Johnson, with a gunshot wound to his chest. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Police telling us witnesses saw a fight between Johnson and another man, that suspect, and that's when the suspect pulled a gun and fired. Police made an arrest just a few blocks away from where Johnson was found at last check. Charges are still pending. And investigators also looking into a separate shooting just west of downtown. Police called to this scene near the corner of Canario and Santiago just after midnight. When they arrived on the scene, investigators finding a woman in the middle of the road with multiple gunshot wounds. Officers telling us she was shot in the wrist and the upper left side of her chest. She was taken to University Hospital at last check still in critical condition. Police still trying to figure out what exactly happened, what led to the shooting, and who was responsible. Well, now let's check the, on the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. City leaders reporting a decline in hospitalizations, but a record high of deaths in Bear County. So let's take a look at the latest numbers. 11 more people have died, bringing the death toll to 240 people. There are 478 new COVID-19 cases, which brings our total to 27,525 people with the virus. More than 10,000 people have recovered, but 1,166 are in the hospital right now. 436 of those people are in the ICU and 298 of those patients are on ventilators. Staffed hospital bed capacity is at 11%. And Metro Health has a message for anyone who believes their COVID-19 test was part of that backlog and they are still waiting for their results. Everyone has been notified, but Metro Health wants to inform you on how this process actually works. The notification comes in as an automated message through an email or a text message. Notifications are expected within three to four days. If you've not received your results, you can call 311 for help. The backlog affected people who got tested at the city run testing sites after July 2nd. We are just a few wake, weeks away from the beginning of the school year, but it will be starting very different. So let's go ahead and look at those changes. The San Antonio Metropolitan Health District announcing there won't be face to face on campus classes, at least until September 7th. Students will have access to academics online. There will be no in person extracurricular activities, which means at least the first two weeks of high school of high school football will be delayed. For more information about these changes, just head to keysat.com. Well, although students of all ages have been going to school remotely since last March, it's still a big adjustment for everyone involved. There have been there have been, even been some concerns about digital disadvantaged families who aren't tech savvy. And as many of us know, issues arise quite often in the virtual world. So fortunately, the Region 20 Education Service Center is here to help. It offers resources and training for almost 100 school districts and charter schools in nearly 20 counties. Many of our districts have already set up support systems, hotlines, help desks. All of our students are receiving a great instructional experience and long term they will be just fine. She also adds that as long as their education is a meaningful experience, the student will always remember that and remember what they've learned. And when it comes back to school information, we want to help you keep informed as much as possible. That's why we've created a special back to school page that is available right now on ksat.com. You can find tentative start dates for school districts in the San Antonio area, as well as other important information for parents. And as hundreds and hundreds of new confirmed cases of COVID-19 come in every day, the death toll from that pandemic continuing to rise day by day. School though, set to start next month. Now BCSO set to get tough on businesses who don't comply with the new mask mandate. Tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf joining us live. This week has been full of news, so much to keep up with. So there are a lot of questions out there for our local leaders. If you have a question you want asked, you can submit that right now. Just head to casedat.com and head to the Leading SA section. You can see if your question is asked tomorrow morning and that's at 8 a.m. Time now, 806, 75 degrees out. So to come, breaking the vicious cycle of poverty, we'll tell you how one woman is helping at-risk youth find success. 
Plus, local business going the extra mile to keep their customers safe. Up next, Alicia Herrera joining us live with what you can expect next time you visit the Alamo Biscuit Company. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam. 75 degrees, a beautiful morning. A bit cooler this morning. Sarah Spivey, when we come back, we'll give you a full weekend forecast. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. The question is, how far are some businesses willing to go to help out customers and help them feel safe and keep that cash flowing during this pandemic? In addition to social distancing measures and deep cleaning, one local restaurant is going the extra mile by providing a misting system. But it's not to keep you cool, it's to help you stay clean. Elisa Barra joining us live from the Alamo Biscuit Company with more on how this device works and how it helps. Morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, biscuits, breakfast tacos, pan dulce. And then if you come here to Alamo Biscuit Company, you also get a full body disinfecting session. So we've invited the owner of Alamo Biscuit Company, as well as sanitizer to you, okay. John Vale, to talk more about this system that we're seeing here. So this is brand new. Um, uh, customers already coming in this morning. Yes. How tall is this, this device here? Um, it's about seven and a half feet. Tall, right? And you mentioned it's pretty easy to use. Two people yes. can walk in. Yes, definitely good for couples. They could go in together or, you know, single handedly. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's easy to use because we see a red button to the right of it. So, yes. what's inside after you press that button? We won't do that just now, but <laughs> once you press that button, what's going to happen? So, it will release a mist of a chlorine based disinfectant spray. And um, yeah, and it will spray you down for about five seconds or so, roughly. Yeah. And so some people may be concerned, do I have to do this when I walk in? Is it safe? What would you tell them? Oh, it's definitely safe, yes. Uh, chlorine dioxide is what it is. Um, so it's safe on the skin. We just strongly recommend to close your eyes and cover your mouth. <laughs> definitely cover your mouth. You want to do that. Mouth. And yeah. so here we have this sign that they have at the front, disinfecting portal. Again, it's not required. This is completely optional for both the employees and customers coming. And it tells you here clearly, press the button to begin. And that caution right there, close eyes and mouth when passing. So again, this is about a five second process. And again, all you have to do is press that button. So later on in the newscast, we're going to be sticking around here at Alamo Biscuit Company with John Vale. And we're actually going to be walking through there and seeing exactly how it works. So he convinced me when he said that it's, it doesn't harm you. It's safe. It's safe. Yeah. So we'll put it to the test, you guys. And again, this is a totally optional thing for both employees and customers. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, Quesa 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Alicia. Taking a look outside, 75 degrees now. What was it, Sarah? Eight days in a row where we've seen 100 oh. degrees? Yeah, eight days consecutively in a row of at least 100 degrees. And then you're not going to like this number, too. It's been a long time without rain in San mm. Antonio. Hey, we had some well. clouds yesterday, though. We did have some clouds, but we still got up to 101. So I'm staying optimistic. Yeah, today I just don't think we're going to get to 100, though, so we should be able to break that streak. However, this streak is probably going to continue 21 days consecutive days without measurable rainfall at the airport. And it's going to be hard for us to see much of anything today, although we do have a 10% chance for a stray shower uh, or storm. But mainly the isolated rain will be along the coastal plain from Beeville to Victoria to Hallettsville down to Corpus Christi. That's where we'll have a 20% chance. And then potentially one or two of those may make it all the way to the I-35 corridor. But that chance for rain is just not great. It's only 10% in San Antonio. So don't expect widespread rainfall today. You can already see some of those coastal showers developing uh, near Houston and in the RGV. Now our weather pattern with the reason why we have those isolated showers along the coastal plain is you see this bump in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's a little wiggle, a little wave that would provide a little bit of energy for those coastal showers to push further on inland. However, we're still under the influence of a high pressure system a heat dome. Now that little wiggle in the atmosphere has pushed that heat dome up to the north. So really the main area of heat will be across the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. 102 for the high temperature in Amarillo. Meanwhile, across south central Texas and even up into north Texas, still only going to be able to see a high temperature in the mid to upper 90s. So 
That little wiggle in the atmosphere, even though it's not really causing a lot of rainfall for us, it is relieving the heat just a little bit. 75 degrees outside, partly cloudy skies, and it's humid at the moment. We've got dew points in the 70s, so humidity at 84%. Definitely muggy, but still nice enough to go outside and enjoy a little bit of outdoors time early this morning. And then later again in the evening hours when it'll be comfortable outside. 71 degrees in Bandera, 70 in Rio Medina, 74 your wake-up temperature in Hondo. 77 in New Braunfels, 74 in Canyon Lake. On the future cast, you can totally see those isolated pop up showers along the coastal plain, and then maybe one or two of them making it to the I 35 corridor. However, for the vast majority of us, even though we may not reach 100 in San Antonio, it is still going to be hot. 96 for the high in Hondo, 95 in Pleasanton, 93 in Kerrville, 97 in New Braunfels, 95 in Gonzales, maybe up to 100 in Del Rio and Eagle Pass. So that's really normal this time of year for them out toward the west. Now again, just to break things down for you, fairly nice this morning, a little on the muggy side, but staying in the 80s until noon, and that's when we'll really crank up the heat. South southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and a pretty pleasant evening with temperatures falling into the 80s. Looking ahead, it's going to be a fairly mundane forecast. All right, we'll have high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s just about every day, every day seeing some coastal showers and then potentially one or two pop up showers and storms on Friday as well. It's been very dry for July. It's usually dry in July, but it's been very dry again. 21 consecutive days without rainfall. We did have an interesting light show last night at around 2 o'clock in the morning. Looked like some folks were able to see a meteorite falling apart or space junk. If you have videos of that, send that into our case that connect uh, feature on our weather app. We'll show it on air. It's actually quite interesting. Actually wasn't Comet Neo wise because that happened shortly before sunset and this happened short this, that common news happens shortly after sunset, but this happened at two o'clock in the morning mm. for all of our UFO believers. Thank you, Sarah Spivey, for oh clearing my goodness. all of that up. Hey, I'm, I'm not going to get into that water. <laughs> no, nope, don't do it. Thank you, Sarah. 817, 75 degrees out. Just ahead, how one woman is changing education for kids living in poverty. Welcome back. It's 820. Well, one in six children live in poverty in the U.S. Now, people who do not earn a high school diploma are seven times more likely to be persistently poor as adults, making on average $10,000 less than a high school grad. And get this, more than $35,000 less than a person with a college degree. So now one woman is helping kids find their way out of this vicious cycle. Our Stephanie Serna tells us a story. My dad is a gang member. We grew up really poor. He was into drugs. Pearl Arandondo says she was a rebel. I had everything stacked against me. But she says there were teachers who would not let her fail. So after high school, she went on to receive a bachelor's and a master's degree from Pepperdine. Pearl then returned to her old middle school as a principal. She started off as a student here. Now she's a principal and I think that's so inspiring for a lot of girls and all the students here. Pearl fought to create a new kind of school. We had to do something radically different that had never been done before. The school, now a STEAM school with a focus on science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And we want them to be able to be creative and think critically. 98% of students there are Latino. 100% qualify for free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The teachers say they fight every day to make sure these kids are successful. If I ever needed help with anything, I can talk to an adult and they'll help me. I was in a really bad place and I was having a hard time, but this year I'm getting better. Pearl says teachers and principals are under a one-year contract, and if they're not 100% invested, they're out. State test scores have gone up every year since the school started 10 years ago. We learn about the four P's, which stand for being prompt, prepared, productive, and polite. Every year, Pearl shares her story with the students, telling them everyone has a struggle and everyone needs help along the way. This is my heart and this is my soul here. I want them to, to aspire to be bigger and better. And that's exactly what they're doing. I plan to go to college to become an engineer. I hope I can become a lawyer. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. And time now, 822, 75 degrees out. Pizza and burger fans in the Elmo City now have a new dish to look forward to. After the break, David Elder shows us where you can get a bite of this delicious infusion. Mm. 
With me right here is Lena Campos. Now you are the doer of everything <laughs> inside this building. You do it all. Pretty much. Pretty much. And right in front of us, three different burgers. They all look delicious, unique in their own special way. Two sides. Now we're gonna talk about this first one right here because I haven't seen a burger like this anywhere especially in San Antonio. Talk to me about what's going on. This is our pizza burger. It is actually very different. It is our ground chuck and it's topped with mozzarella, pepperoni, <laughs> marinara. We dusted it with some Parmesan cheese to finish it off. So it's like an actual pizza. And a, bur and a burger. <laughs> and a burger. <laughs> yeah. A pizza and a burger got together and this is what happened. Yep. I gotta take a bite out of this. burger is exactly what you want it to be. It's a pizza on a burger and it's done so well. It's very simple, straightforward, marinara, mozzarella cheese, you got pepperonis on there, it's ooey, it's gooey, and that chuck patty just sings through the whole thing. The toasted buns really make it taste like it's an actual pizza. I was a little skeptical at first. I'm, but I'm still skeptical. He sold me with the bite and Elder. The cheese that came out. Exactly. <laughs> I will say, I don't think Elder's had anything that he hasn't liked, but that cheese. Too much for me. No. No. 827, 75 degrees out. Still ahead on our next half hour, what researchers are saying about the success rate of the CPR technique. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. 830 this morning, July 18th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Max, uh, I, I ate consecutive days mm -hmm. of triple digits, but today, Sarah Spivey. Yeah. We may not, we may break that change. <laughs> yeah, we probably won't get up to 100 degrees today. At least there's a good chance that we won't get up to 100 degrees today. Now, of course, it's still going to be hot. We're going to see temperatures climb to the upper 90s anyway, but we may just at least beat that streak and that'll help us out mentally, I think. Now this morning we started off fairly nice. We got down to 73 degrees this morning, which is the coolest we've been in San Antonio uh, since uh, June 26th. So Pretty nice morning. It is muggy though outside as it typically is this time of year. It's 73 in Tarpley, 74 in Hondo, 75 in Divine, 72 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 75 in Bulverde. It's 77 in New Braunfels and it's 74 at JBSA Randolph. It's Saturday. Maybe you want to get some yard work done. Well, I would get it done in the morning hours, but that's just me because in the afternoon it will be hot, uh, but you really won't have to worry about much of a chance for rainfall. There's only a 10% chance for a stray shower to make it to the I. 35 corridor. Other than that, it's going to be toasty 97 degrees. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now coming up, I've got an update on the Saharan dust uh, and when we can start to see that dissipate. Uh, and of course, I'll have a look ahead to the week and if there's any other hope for rain. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, developing this morning, a man remains in serious condition after exchanging gunfire with police on the northeast side. Chief William McManus tells us around 930 last night, police responded to a family violence call at an apartment complex on Canyon Parkway. That's near Bulverde Road. Upon responding, the woman who made the call yelled to an officer that her boyfriend was inside the apartment with a gun and a knife. The chief says a suspect then came out of the balcony and started shooting at the officer. The suspect was 27 years old. His partner was 20, is 22 years old. There was also a two-month-old baby in, in the house when this was occur in the apartment when this occurred. The officers were not injured. One officer has eight years on. The other officer has 11 years on. And uh, no one else was injured in, in that exchange of gunfire. The chief tells us a suspect was hit several times and was taken later to the hospital in serious condition. Officers are still trying to figure out what led to the family violence and why the man which, why the man shot at police. Now to the latest on the pandemic here in our area, the first death of COVID-19 reported in Kendall County. Officials say the person who died was someone who lived in the county and was isolated at home. Right now on KSAT.com, we have all the information about what Kendall County Emergency Manager is saying about this death, as well as their latest COVID-19 numbers. Just head to our website at KSAT.com. Look for the story on the homepage under the coronavirus tab.
And now new details about a call for volunteers for a possible vaccine trial we've been following. 2,500 people have signed up to participate. Clinical Trials of Texas plans to start the study on July 27th. They've already started screening people. The trial involves two rounds of injections one month apart. While the vaccine is not live, some participants could experience mild side effects like fever, muscle aches, and fatigue. If you'd like to participate, you have to be 18 years or older and any underlying health conditions like diabetes or hypertension must be managed. We have a link to register right now. Just head to KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, John Lewis, a pillar of the civil rights movement and a longtime congressman, has passed away after battling pancreatic cancer. Now his colleagues in Congress are remembering some of his great achievements. Here's ABC's, ABC's Rachel Scott in Washington with this story. From the freedom rides in the Jim Crow South to sit-ins on Capitol Hill. And his final public appearance last month, fittingly, at Black Lives Matter Plaza. Here in Washington, Congressman John Lewis was known as the conscience of Congress, a democratic force. Where is the heart of this body? Where is our soul? Where is our moral leadership? Where is our courage? This morning, Lewis remembered as one of the greatest heroes in American history, from his colleagues on both sides of the aisle. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling Lewis a titan of the civil rights movement, whose bravery transformed our nation. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell writing, you did not need to agree with John on many policy details to be awed by his life, admire his dedication to his neighbors in Georgia's 5th District, or appreciate his generous, respectful, and friendly bearing. Lewis would lead bipartisan delegations to Selma, Democrats and Republicans standing shoulder to shoulder, marching across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. The civil rights icon was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor in February 2011. And generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or some other time, whose life is a lesson in the fierce urgency of now. In March, members of Congress threw Lewis a surprise birthday party. He turned 80 years old. Happy Congresswoman Catherine Clark writing, the pride of our lives is calling you a friend. And it was here in the nation's capital almost 60 years ago that Congressman Lewis marched on Washington saying America cannot rest until everyone is treated equally. President Obama saying he loved his country so much that he risked his own life and blood so that it might live up to its promise. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And also in your morning headlines, a Houston federal judge ruling that the Republican Party of Texas may proceed with its in-person convention. This comes after the GOP party officials struggled to get a virtual gathering underway. The ruling says the party can hold an in-person convention both this weekend and next weekend and quote, the city of Houston may not interfere with it and quote. The party's virtual convention was set to begin Thursday, but technical issues caused it to be postponed. Well, former Vice President and Presidential Candidate Joe Biden is warning that Russia, China and other adversaries are trying to interfere in America's election process. During a virtual fundraiser, Biden said that he's receiving briefings on the issue, but he did not go into detail. An official with the Office of Director, the Office of the Director of the National Intelligence says the presidential campaigns have been receiving election security briefings but did not describe the threats the campaigns have been told about. Time now, 8.37, 75 degrees out. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, taking your movie experience Ooh. to the next level. I don't know if we do this. This is awesome. It's, it's, this is what I've been excited about all morning. When and where you can watch from inside a boat. Look at that. And a local restaurant making big changes to help keep customers safe during this pandemic. We're going to check in with Alicia Abrera. She's going to be live with the latest details of this disinfecting portal. Taking a look outside with live cam, 75 degrees, a beautiful summer morning that we haven't had in a while at this cooler temperatures. Sarah Spivey will bring you a weekend forecast and she'll be talking about the light in the sky you may have seen last night.
Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. 841 this morning. Disinfecting stations throughout a lot of businesses. They're now common sites because of the pandemic. Some may have hand sanitizers, gel, spray or wipes, but one local company going above and beyond creating a walkthrough portal disinfecting your whole body. Our Alicia Barretta is live from Alamo Biscuit Company. She's not there for breakfast. She's there for a closer look at the portal that has been installed at this local restaurant. Alicia, how does this work? All right, so it's very simple. It's just a press of a button and then you'll stand under the portal. We'll show you just how uh, for about a few seconds. First, we want to check in with John Vale here. He's the owner for Alamo Biscuit Company, as well as the Sanitizer to You Company. So what exactly is in the solution? So in the solution, it's a chlorine based solution uh, to be uh, to chlorine dioxide, actually. And you say it's safe? But yes. So the only thing that they ask, and you can see the signage over here, press button to begin and caution, close eyes and mouth when passing. So we're going to try this out. Yes. So we're going to press this red button here. So press that red button there. And then... Do a little 360 spin. Put your phone out. I always tell customers to get a little disinfectant spray on your phone. There we go. Thank you. All right. <laughs> So no stinging, nothing. Um, you say this has been very popular and it's only been here at Alamo Biscuit Company for a few days, not yes, even a week. Yes, we installed it about two days ago um, and customers are loving it right now. They, you know, they use it on the way out, not this in. So it's pretty cool. But you've gotten a big response from other people. Yes, uh, a huge, uh, yes, huge response. Uh, yesterday, uh, the United States uh, Border Patrol reached out and they're very interested in, in, the, in the portal. So we're getting a package together for them. Uh, as well as schools, academies, we have a lot of people reaching out. Um, it, it's been a great, great response. Very surprising. Awesome, you guys. So this, again, is a disinfecting portal that is, you don't even have to connect to anything, but you also say that people can connect whatever solution they choose. Yes, to. so the, the, our customers who buy the machine are allowed to use whatever solution they, they want. It uh, doesn't matter. Um, we're not, we're not going to force them to use a, a particular solution so that they can do whatever they want. And John mentions that, of course, a lot of people are for this. We actually witnessed several customers right now walk through and saying that they wish that other restaurants in the area or any building that they walk into had something similar to this where they could get like a full body disinfection. And of course, there's some people who are not comfortable with with it but again you guys this is not required it's completely optional and then john assures people that it's safe so we'll be sticking around here and hopefully speaking to some customers as well as employees on how their experiences walking through this portal reporting live alicia barrera quesa 12 news all right thank you so much alicia all right so it started off at 70, 74 degrees today the coolest it has been in about a 73. month? 73. 73. Uh, well, in 21 days. So 21, not okay. quite oh, close. a month, okay, since June 26th. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and it's still muggy outside, so it's not necessarily a cool, brisk morning. <laughs> but it's nice to see that trend downwards, isn't it? Something else we're hoping to break is the consecutive triple-digit streak. Here's a look at the last... Uh, about 10 days or so, and you can see that for the last eight days, we have had high temperatures at or above 100 degrees. Started off on July 10th at 103. We topped off at 107 on July 13th this past Monday. That's the hottest temperature ever recorded in July for San Antonio. And just yesterday and the day before, we were at 101 degrees. I do think today that we'll stay below that century mark and end up uh, breaking that streak, which in my book is good news. Now it's still going to be hot outside. Uh, our national weather pattern shows that heat dome that is still going to have control over the state of Texas today. However, the heat dome has moved a little bit more to the north, and that's where the main area of heat is going to be 102 for the high in Amarillo and up at the panhandle of Oklahoma. It's also going to be very hot elsewhere, including here in South Central Texas will be in the mid to upper 90s. So again, still very hot just not technically 100. Showing you the future cast here because I want to show that along the coastal plain and then down to Laredo and in the RGV, there is a chance for rain today. One or two of those very isolated showers or storms may make it to the I-35 corridor. And so we're going to call it about a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm, but a 10% chance is not a good chance. It's a measly chance for rain. Other than that, we're just going to be hot. High temperatures ranging anywhere from about 
96 in Stone Oak to 95 in Elmendorf to 97 in downtown San Antonio, low 90s up in the hill country toward Bernie. So very hot day ahead for us in spite of the fact that we won't hit 100. Now looking outside right now, we're seeing partly cloudy skies, 75 degrees. Nice to be outside, a little muggy, but you can have your cup of coffee outside this morning. Humidity at 84%. Elsewhere, wake up temperatures 73 in Rock Springs, 76 in Uvalde, 77 in Carrizo Springs, 78 in Pleasanton and 80 in Gonzales for the day today. We'll be in the 80s for most of the morning, getting to 90 by noon and then 97 for the high, carrying a 10% chance for a stray coastal shower. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 to even 15 miles per hour. I want to transition right now and I want to talk about the Saharan dust. There will be some Saharan dust present today, maybe giving a little bit of a haze to the horizon, but it will quickly dissipate in the upcoming days and not really bother us for at least another week. However, today Today, there is still going to be a moderate air quality, not necessarily good, but moderate. Now, just to compare this, a few weeks ago when we had very high levels of Saharan deaths, the air quality was unhealthy for just about everybody. Today, it's moderate. Only if you are unusually sensitive uh, to particulate matter in the air would you have any need to worry about being outside. The vast majority of us are going to be okay today. And then looking ahead, we are going to be in the mid to upper 90s just about every day with day Daily coastal showers possible and again one or two of those may make it to San Antonio by the week's end and by Friday. Now I know that Sarah mentioned earlier that we were going to talk about uh, something that lit up the sky last night. We've actually just got video in that we'll be able to show during our nine o'clock hour of what appears to be at least to me and the rest of the weather team some space junk that fell through the atmosphere made for a light show at about two o'clock in the morning. So I hope you'll stick around uh, through the 9 a.m. hour or at least set those DVRs. Max, Sarah. Alright, thanks so much, Sarah. See, I tried to be optimistic. I was like, oh, we might not hit 100 today. And Sarah comes out, oh, it's still going to be hot. Yeah, thanks, still hot. Sarah. Thanks, no, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. 848, 75 degrees out. A new study about the success of the CPR technique. Next on GMSA, we have the findings on survival rates when it's applied in hospitals and when it's not. But first, we're going to take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, one, three, fireball, zero. Your daily four, five, eight, seven, five, fireball, zero. Cash five, four, eight, 25, 28, and 35. And Mega Millions, 12, 13, 21, 46, 57. Mega Ball, 21, Mega Flyer, three. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 8.52 this morning. So everyone knows CPR and if you don't, you probably should learn it. Researchers say though, people overestimate the success rate of the CPR technique. The Emergency Medicine Journal published the results of a CPR survey. So this study shows more than half of people who participate in the survey believe that whenever CPR is used, it works 75% of the time. That is not correct. Researchers say the actual survival rate of CPR is much lower on average. 12% of those who need CPR out of the hospital, only 12% works. And that in the hospital, only 24 to 40% of people survive after CPR. According to, the J According to J.D. Power, people who drive Subarus continue to go back for more. The company says Subaru has the highest loyalty rate. They looked at the percentage of vehicle owners who choose the same brand when trading in or purchasing their next car. For the second year in a row, Subaru ranked highest overall with a 60.5% loyalty rate. It was followed closely by Toyota and Honda. And big news for the state of Texas. Texas State Aquarium in Corpus Christi earning national recognition in a survey conducted by USA Today. The aquarium ranked fourth best in the country. The Audubon Aquarium of the Americas in New Orleans taking third, Ripley's Aquarium in Gatlinburg, Tennessee taking second, and the Wonders of Wildlife Aquarium in Springfield, Missouri ranking as the top aquarium in the country. Texas State Aquarium, also known as the largest aquarium here in the Lone Star State. I know that you were very excited about this. Yes, because I'm from Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. I grew up going to that museum. Jody Benson, who played uh, the voice of Little Mermaid, she went and sang 
um, for their opening back Whoa. in the early 90s. I think it was like 91 when they opened. Also, they have a brand new, like, multi-million dollar edition that they opened maybe like three or four years ago. They have like sloths that just wander around. Like, Sarah Costa, iguanas. aquarium spokeswoman over here. You should go. There you go. Great experience. 854, 75 degrees out. Well, when you go, when you... Next time you think about watching a movie in the water, we have that... The, the, just look at the picture. It's boats in water. It's a drive-through. We'll talk about that next. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. Take a look at this. A new social distancing friendly experience coming to Texas, allowing people to watch a movie while floating in the water. This is pretty cool. It's called Floating Cinema and will use 12 to 24 mini boats that can hold up to eight people per boat. Oh, looks there are a whole more people than I thought. It will run for one week starting September 23rd and people must sign up for news about ticket sales. Mm -hmm. And this is all in Austin. According to the page, though, the movies are set to be a mix of oldies and new releases. There's going to be free popcorn and other movie snacks, and drinks are available for purchase before you set sail. Well, if water isn't your thing, don't worry. There's still other ways to have fun this summer. Amusement parks and zoos may be closed, but you can still go camping or even take a road trip with your family. Some RV dealerships have seen as much as 170% surge in sales, and many buyers are first-timers coming up in our next half hour. Our Marilyn Moritz will have a full story along with a few things you should consider before making that big purchase. All right, time now, 8.58, 75 degrees out. Still ahead, details on the upcoming fall semester after a new school health directive was announced. What parents, students, and teachers can expect. And a few changes come to the South Texas beaches this month. What you need to know before you hit the sand. And the latest details on a shooting that happened overnight. What San Antonio police say witnesses told them about that shooting. That's next on GMSA. Good morning, welcome back, and ooh, happy Saturday, 9.01 this morning. We are starting to creep up the temperatures, 79 now. Sarah's telling us we start at 73. Until we hit Sarah, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, July 18th. Good morning, thank you so much for starting your Saturday morning with us. Sarah Spivey, it is 79 degrees. We're going to stay cool for just a little bit longer, though. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit longer. As you know, South Texas sunshine shines on through and temperatures start warming up. We were at 73 this morning, which was the coolest we have been since June 26th. But as you can see, temperatures are all right, already rising. We're near 80 degrees around San Antonio. It's 80 at Port SA, 77 in Divine, 75 in Tarpley, 79 at JBSA Randolph, 80 in New Braunfels. Now, for the day today, we're likely going to stay below 100 degrees. That'll be the first time we've done so in eight days, but it's still going to be hot. We're going to get up to 97. Now, notice that I put a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. That's because coastal showers and storms will develop isolated, and maybe one or two will make it to the I-30. 35 corridor, but it's not looking great for rain for us. Again, 10% chance for isolated shower storm. That's not what we need right now. It's been very dry. We've had 21 consecutive days without rain. Speaking of coastal plain, here's a look at your coast cast. If you happen to be wanting to go to Rockport, Port A or Corpus, highs will be in the low 90s and we'll have isolated showers and storms out there. And the reason I'm showing this too is later on in the show, uh, we're going to have some beach safety tips within this coronavirus atmosphere for you to keep in mind. Coming up, we have got a look at something that lit up the night sky last night. Uh, some viewers have been sending in some videos of what appears to be space junk. Yeah, interesting. We've got a lot to cover in the forecast coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest in the pandemic. We now know the big changes in the plan to restart the new school year. No face to face classes and extra extracurricular activities are not going to be happening until at least September 7th. Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at that plan. All right, so there you go. You said it best. No on-campus face-to-face instruction until at least after September 7th. That means that it's all going to be virtual learning, learning online, learning from home. That also includes sports and extracurricular activities, so I know that does affect, we're talking about the football season, mm -hmm. high school football season, at least for the first two weeks. 
is going to be postponed. That's right. It's going to be postponed. And then a lot of teams uh, there, actually a lot of teams that we heard from, they said that they are just happy that there's going to be a season at all. But right now, we're not so sure that's going to happen. There is a tentative plan in place. Right now, those districts, all the districts, they are required to make that health and safety plan by August 21st. I do want to add that the Texas Education Agency, they updated their guidance yesterday that they can schools can only teach online for up to eight weeks at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. So they have eight weeks to do virtual learning, but then they have to kind of figure out their plan to bring everyone back. That's right. And we keep mentioning September 7th because that was the date that was given to us in the latest plan. But we're also told that date is not set in stone. Our local public health officials will monitor progress and warning indicators to determine whether further delays will be needed to protect the health and safety of all of our students, teachers, and school staff. And if you have any questions about the upcoming plan for that September 7th date, if it will be pushed forward or about your specific district, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And like we said, everything is changing from day to day, so don't keep those dates as a hard dates. Just you know, stay with us and we'll update you as everything continues to get updated throughout the next coming weeks. Absolutely. Meanwhile, two new initiatives announced in hopes of getting the community talking about reform in the criminal justice system. The Bear County District Attorney's Office made the announcement during a virtual town hall. They are working on two new programs, the DA Academy, which will allow the public to learn about the process of criminal cases, and it's not just for adults. Kids will also be able to participate. The second program is a citizens advisory panel, which will include members of the community and experts. Those people will be able to meet with us to give us perspectives on things that we're doing in the office. They'll be able to tackle certain issues and they'll be able to talk to us about issues and concerns that they have regarding the criminal justice system. And the district attorney has also been working on other restorative uh, justice programs, including site and release and personal rec uh, recognizance bonds. He says his office will continue looking at ways to make improvements. And we have much more COVID-19 coverage and much more on the pandemic right now. Again, just head to KSAT.com. Well, new this morning, a shooting on the city's east side ends with one man shot and killed in the middle of the street. And another man is now in custody. Police on the scene tell us just before 1145 last night, investigators found the victim, 28 year old Justin Johnson, with a gunshot wound to his chest. He was pronounced dead on scene. Police say witnesses saw a fight between Johnson and another man. That's when the suspect pulled a gun and fired. Police made an arrest a few blocks away from where Johnson was found, but at last check, charges are still pending. And investigators are also looking into a separate shooting west of downtown. Police were called to the scene near the corner of Canario and Santiago just after midnight. When they arrived on scene, they found a woman in the road with multiple gunshot wounds. Officers tell us she was shot in the wrist and the upper left side of her chest. She was taken to University Hospital and at last check was in critical condition. Police are working, trying to figure out exactly what happened and who was responsible. And let's take a live look at the roadways right now. There is 35 at Alamo. What else we got out there? Everything seems to be running smoothly. Iris 10 at Hildebrand. If you are out and about today, make sure to drive safe. Be smart, and if you do have errands, I would do them now before it gets much hotter out there. All right, happening right now, local restaurant in the city's northwest side. They are known for their biscuits, but now they're getting more attention for how they're telling customers to sanitize. This week in Alamo Biscuit Company, customers will be greeted with a disinfecting spray portal. Our Alicia Bonetta is live from the restaurant with more on how this works. All right, so Alicia, I said, uh, said customers, but are these customers and employees, do they have to go through the walkthrough? They don't have to go through the walkthrough. It's completely optional. And we actually just witnessed a family walk in just a few minutes ago and they had a little girl of about five, six years old. And at first she was a little hesitant, but mom explained to her exactly what this was. And it turned out to be a little game for her and she was smiling and everything was fine. And one of the familiar faces that you'll find here at Alamo Biscuit Company is Martin Gallegos. Martin, so you tell me that this has just been here for a few days. What was your initial reaction when, when this was set up? When it first came in, I was a little hesitant, but then after setting it up, actually w seeing customers walk through it, I was like, wow, this is our future now. Sanitizer everywhere in the cars, going to the stores, masks. This is going to be our lives for the next couple of months. 
So and you that, should get used to it. And that first time that you walked through, what were your thoughts? What were you kind of, how was that first experience? I would, it, um, I guess I kind of jumped because of the little sprays, but you get used to it after the second time. Now I come into my shift, go in through it, walk out, and I go out through the portal. Martin, thanks so much for being with us. And he's going to go back to waiting his tables. He took a little break to share with us his experience. <laughs> and once again, he'll show you how it works. Martin, thank you so much. John, what prompted this idea um, to come up with a portal like this one? Um, I saw the device being used in a different country, actually, by a manufacturer. Um, I thought it was very interesting, and um, I reached out to them, and I got the distribution rights from them to go through uh, my company sanitizer to you so I could bring it to the local market here and introduce it to everybody. And sanitizer um, to you does sell this whole good up together and that solution back there, what is it, what is it made of? It's a, a chlorine-based solution to be, uh, to be exact, it's chlorine dioxide. And you mentioned it's optional too, so mm. people back at home, they can use, or at different businesses can use this yes. solution or yeah. whatever mm -hmm. they feel most comfortable mm -hmm. with? Yes, uh, like the customer that comes to us and buys a device has uh, it's up to them what they want to use as their solution. It, we're not going to make anyone use a certain solution. And already there's been a lot of reaction to this, good and bad, but you mentioned businesses, even here in San Antonio, have already reached out to you. Could you name a few? Yes, uh, multiple schools, public schools, uh, academies have reached out, uh, U.S. government agencies like the Border Patrol have reached out to me as of yesterday. And uh, they're very int intrigued by the product. Absolutely. Well, you guys, this is definitely something that you could start to see, that we could all start to see maybe at the entrance of schools since some may be back in session with in-person classes in September, like um, you, Sarah, and Max were just mentioning. Or, you know, when you walk into a bank or we don't know, but this could perhaps very well be the future. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you so much, Alicia. That's a good point. It could be right in the front of schools now. You know, it's a new it's a new way of living. 910, 79 degrees up. Well, still ahead, TxDOT is doing their part to keep motorcyclists safe this month. How you can take part in their annual Share the Road campaign. And it might not crack 100, but we are still going to be hot here in Texas today. Make sure you are prepared if you plan to head to the beach this month, this month, this weekend. Today, we have new restrictions in place along the South Texas coast. Taking a look outside with live cam. It is 79 degrees. Ooh, it's refreshing. It's refreshing, but it's going to heat up. Sarah Spy, we will tell you about our temperatures this weekend. We come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. A good weekend to go to the beach, but in an effort to reduce the spread of the coronavirus, the city of Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, and Padre Island National Seashore, they are temporarily closing access to vehicles and to golf carts. So if you're heading out to the beach this weekend, we want to make sure you are aware of these changes. The closure is in effect on the north and south part of Padre Island National Seashore throughout July until 6 a.m. on Saturday and August 1st, unless extended. Pedestrian access is still allowed on Bird Island Boat Ramp and Malachi Beach. And the city of Rockport also ordering that no vehicles can be driven on the beach or the boat ramp. Officials say the new order begins tomorrow and it'll last until at least August 1st. And if you're still planning on heading out there, you must park on the fairgrounds located near the beach area. Anyone who is caught violating the order faces a Class C misdemeanor. And if you are planning to head to the beach this weekend, make sure you plan ahead. There is a lot to keep in mind for you and your family to be safe during your visit. For example, if you're going to South Padre Island, there's a limit on gatherings for up to 10 people. Beach setups have to be at least 15 feet apart from other people and only single pole umbrellas are allowed with a two chair limit. Also, on some beaches, concession stands, bathrooms, and showers are off limits. Make sure to check the crowds before leaving your house. On KSAT.com, we have links to some webcams that give a little glimpse to several beaches around Texas. So now the question is, Sarah Spivey, is it going to be a good day to go to the beach? You know, it will. You might have to dodge one or two isolated showers or storms, especially out near Corpus Christi in the Rockport area. Uh, but uh, here in San Antonio, we'll stay fairly dry, pretty nice and hot, typical beach day, as long as you follow those precautions. Okay, guys, we received a lot of calls last night at about 2 a.m., mm. 3 a.m. from something in the sky. And we also saw some videos posted of uh, to us, and this is a really interesting video. I want you to look at this. Okay, this is what I believe, mm. and, and the meteorology, meteorology team here believes, 
is space junk that is burning up as it goes into the atmosphere. Uh, now, it could also be a meteorite, but meteorites typically don't last this long. It's not Comet Neowise. It's not the right time for Comet Neowise, 2 a.m. last night. Notice how it continues to break apart. And that's what I think that is some of that space junk that's continuing to fall apart. There's a lot of space junk up there in low Earth orbit from satellites that go out of commission or uh, rocket stages from launches. So I read on NASA that somewhere between 200 and 400 objects, space junk, falls to the Earth every year. So that's at least one a day. Uh, and it just happened that some folks around San Antonio were able to see that again late last night between the hours of about two and three o'clock in the morning. Very interesting picture. Thank you, Aaron, for sending in that picture. We'll have a weather article about that up on KSAT.com. Now, back to the weather here in San Antonio. We have gone 21 consecutive days without rainfall at the airport. That's that's a big ouch, all right? We need some rain, and we're starting to see drought creep back in, and I think we're going to continue with this trend. Our rain chances today are really located along the coastal plain, from Corpus Christi to Victoria to Hallettsville to Houston. Houston, there's about a 20% chance for isolated showers or storms there. Now, one or two of these isolated showers or storms could make it to that I-35 corridor, and that's why there's a 10% chance for isolated shower or storm in San Antonio, but that is not good odds. 10% chance, not good odds for rainfall. Otherwise, we're going to continue to see our heat. Now, we won't necessarily be at 100 degrees, but it's still going to be hot. One of the reasons why we're going to be able to see a few of those coastal showers is there's a bit of a wave in the upper level weather pattern that's allowing for the momentum for those showers and storms to make it onto shore. And that's also bumped up the heat dome a little bit further north. And so the main area of heat should be around the panhandle of Texas today. And of course, out toward El Paso, Midland, Odessa, and Lubbock area. Elsewhere, we're going to see a high temperature in the mid to upper 90s, uh, including here in South Central Texas. Outside right now, we are looking at partly cloudy skies, mostly sunny actually right now, 79, and it's humid. We've got dew points in the 70s, so humidity is at 74%. Already seeing a lot of sunshine out there, and so these temperatures are just going to soar. But if you want to get outside, this is the best time to do it in the morning hours before lunch, and then once again after sunset. 75 at Bernie Stage, 78 in Rio Medina, 78 in Hondo, 79 in Divine, 79 in at JBSA Randolph. And again, on the future cast, you can see that one or two isolated showers or storms will be possible along the coastal plain and then toward the RGV as well. Some of that does show it popping up very, very isolated 10% chance of showers around San Antonio. But this is the weather story for all of us, regardless of if you get a quick splash and dash shower, the heat. But notice, we're below 100 degrees, so at least we have that going for us. However, out near Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, going to be close to 100 out there at west, as it typically is. So, pretty nice outside right now, staying in the 80s for most of the morning, already 90 by noon, 97 in the afternoon. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. There's that 10% chance. We'll dip back into the 80s by 10 o'clock tonight. And then looking ahead, pretty mundane forecast, to be honest with you. Upper 90s for the highs and just a few coastal showers possible. Keeping our fingers crossed for Friday. Best chance for rain, and it's only 20%. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. What I do see, though, no triple digits in that forecast. I'll take this forecast over <laughs> last week's forecast any day. Time now is 920, 79 degrees out. All right, earlier he talked about a, a pizza burger, mm. but now David Elder is showing us where you can get a ice cream burger. Hmm. I think I, I mean, I'm into this one. We'll this is, yeah, this is Mark's outing. I've been there. It is phenomenal. But before we talk Mark's outing, we are talking lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, one, three, fireball zero, daily four, five, eight, seven, five, fireball zero. Cash five, four, eight, 25, 28, 35. And mega millions, 12, 13, 21, 46, 57, mega ball, 21, mega plier, three. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is 9.23 this morning. Saturdays just come with a different kind of energy, a different kind of vibe. You know why that is? Because David Elder's on. Because we got Texas Eats, and it is on twice, 10 a.m. and 11 p.m. this evening. Well, Texas Eats host David Elder is mm -hmm. giving us one last sneak peek of what you can expect in today's episode at 10 this morning, and like Max said, at 11 tonight. 
In this clip, David visits Mark from Mark's Outings to check out their ice cream burger. The ice cream burger. You heard me right. You deep fry an ice cream and you're putting on a burger. I've had one of these before and I absolutely love it. But this is the most fun part of it. You put the bun on top, right? That's right. Now watch this. Oh, yeah. What made you think about putting ice cream on a burger? You know what, it was kind of like a, just a little challenge between me and my wife, and she <laughs> challenged me that no one would eat it, and so it lit a fire under me, and there you go, the ice cream burger, and here you go, eating it. Ice cream burger, it's breaded. Red onions, pickles, tomatoes burger. It is weird, but it's delicious. Here we go. Ice cream works. It's weird, it's sweet, but it somehow works. It's like taking a sip of your milkshake while eating your burger all at the same time. The red onions have that nice crisp bite to them. This is fun, that is really cool. All right, so I actually did a story with Mark at Mark's Outing and he has an amazing story. A lot of small businesses have been hurting through this pandemic. His business model actually pivoted. He built in a walk-up drive-through area where you can just walk in, place your order, socially distance appropriately. I love the I love the restaurants and the businesses are, that are just thinking like that. It makes you feel a little more comfortable when you get to go to a restaurant and also feel safe. That's true. I haven't had the ice cream burger yet. Oh, I love ice, sweet and salty. You would do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. 925, 79 degrees out. Well, just ahead saying goodbye to some Taco Bell favorites. What inspired the food chain? to make the change. Good morning and welcome back. 929 this morning, the Texas Department of Transportation wants to remind people about their annual Share the Road, Look Twice for Motorcycles campaign. The campaign aims to alert drivers to the risks that motorcycles face and give safety precautions drivers can take to protect motorcycles, motorcyclists and themselves. So make sure you take extra care when making a left turn and pay attention to intersections. Look twice when changing lanes, check your mirrors, and always use your turn signal. And I don't know how much we can say the next one enough. Give driving your full attention. Put the phone down, do not text and drive, and give motorcyclists room when they're passing. And or if you are passing them, move over to the passing lane and don't crowd the full lane. All right, big question, is Taco Bell your fast food restaurant? No. Well, some uh, maybe sometimes at 2 a.m. when they're the only one open. There's better options. <laughs> some fan favorite items are coming off the menu August 13th. So the chain says it's changing its menu after analyzing a new way to run its restaurant with safety being top in mind and ensuring a faster ordering experience. So what's leaving the menu? Among the items, Taco Bell is saying goodbye to the grilled steak soft taco, Nacho Supreme, and the seven layer burrito. Maybe those are some good things. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know the full list, you can head over to our website at ksat.com. You'll find the story under the food tab. And another thing, when I saw a lot of uh, motorcyclists, you know, they, they do the noodles. Mm. They do noodles to remind people, hey, we're sharing the road. Smart. 930, 79 degrees out. A new quirky way to, excuse me, heat. Customers safe Thank from COVID-19 in our next half hour. Alicia Barrera joining us live to give more details about a disinfecting portal that a local company is using. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. It is 9.30 this Saturday morning, 9.34. 9.34, July 18th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us if you're just now getting up. And if you are just now getting up and you haven't opened your door to let your dog out or just to step outside, it's a little cooler, but I think our time with these 70s is running out, Sarah Spivey. Yeah, we're about to be up to 80 degrees right now. Now, earlier this morning, we hit 73 degrees, which is the coolest we've been since June 26th, but it's still muggy outside. So don't by any means think that it's going to feel like fall or a crisp morning out there. It is muggy. It's a summer morning. And let's go ahead and take a look outside. You can see mostly sunny skies, 79 degrees, and humidity is high. Dew points are in the 70s, and so we've got 74% humidity at the moment. And we're just going to see temperatures rise from here on out until about dinner time. 79 in Carisa Springs, 82 in Del Rio, 73 in Rock Springs, 77 in Yavali, 82 in Laredo, 80 in Beeville, and 82 in Gonzales. Now for us here in San Antonio, we're gradually going to see temperatures rise 90 by noon, 97 for the high temperature in the afternoon. So that is below 100. 
If we can stay below 100, we'll beat our streak of eight consecutive triple digit days. South Southeast winds at five to 15 miles per hour. Yes, there is a very small chance for a stray shower storm, 10%, but don't bank on the rain, bank on the heat. And good news in pollen count, we've only got one allergen present. It's mold and it's low at 300. Now we've got to talk a little bit about the Saharan dust that's in the air, but it shouldn't be much of a problem uh, for many of us. I'll have information on that and of course a look ahead to the rest of your weekend and the week ahead coming up. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. City leaders reporting a decline in hospitalizations and a record high of deaths in Bear County. And during the daily briefing, Mayor Ron Nuremberg announcing 11 more people died because of this pandemic, bringing the death toll to 240. There are 478 new COVID-19 cases here in the county, bringing the total to 27,525. Well, more than 10,000 people have recovered, but 1,166 are in the hospital right now. 436 of those people are in ICU and 298 are on ventilators. Staffed hospital bed capacity is at 11%. And we cannot reiterate this enough that you have to wear a mask. You actually did a phenomenal piece for our online and streaming services talking about the different types of masks. Yeah, that's right. So um, I want to give credit though to our, uh, our producer Alyssa because she, Oh, we're going to show that video later, mm -hmm. uh, but she did a really great job and she talked to a local doctor about the safety of which masks and basically handkerchiefs or anything that the face coverings that are have the open mm -hmm. um, are not safe at all. This, but that's how, how he described it. Cloth masks are great, but he recommends a cloth mask that you can put a filter in there, like an actual medical mask or a coffee filter in there for that extra protection. Mm -hmm. He said only when you have one of those cloth masks on with the filter, you, the respiratory droplets only go about two and a half inches, where if you're wearing no no mask at all, I mean, of course, can spread up to eight feet and linger up there, according to you know WHO, that's what they're saying. Um, but if, the medical masks, though, are the most protective, but they do encourage people to leave the medical mask to medical professionals. Now we're gonna check in with Sarah in just a bit about the weather, but we are seeing it cool down a little bit, at least cooler than the last eight days. And that means you might be more inclined to host that barbecue, have some family over. But if you do, obviously we want you to be safe, take the right precautions, and we have a list of precautions for you. That's right, so one of those I'm sorry, my, my story is not pulling up, Max, so you go ahead. Okay, so make sure to socially distance. Make sure that you know where everyone has been. Everyone has been staying safe. If possible, wear a mask if you are within six feet of someone else. And again, just try to keep the amount of people less than 10 people. And if you do have more than 10, make sure that they're very close, families, friends. And again, just try to socially distance as much as possible. Another option, I've seen some of my friends doing this when they do have these backyard bar 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 barbecues, um, the food table where people mm. go and grab the food is kind of separated and you do one at a time and everything is disposable. And it's like, okay, it's your turn. You go to the food table because that's where everyone gathers, of course, around the food. That makes sense. All right, let's take a live look out at the roadways this morning with Trans Guide. There it is, 35 in San Marcos. Everything looking smooth. Again, like we've been saying, it is less than 100 degrees, at least for right now. So if you have things to do, maybe go outside, do it now, avoid that heat. All right, we have been checking in with her throughout the morning. So here it is again. When customers dine in at Alamo Biscuit Company on the northwest side, they can get biscuits, breakfast tacos, or a full body sanitation. How about that? The restaurant is debuting the walkthrough sanitizing portal created by the local company sanitizer to you and an added measure to offer to their customers in order to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Alicia Bonetta is live from the restaurant. Good morning, Alicia. So Alicia, what have been some of the reactions from people who see you there and, and see this sanitizing station? Yeah, good morning. So a lot of people have been walking through saying they that they washed it on KSAT. So they wanted to come check it out before they went uh, to get, grab some breakfast inside. So inside you'll find these socially distanced tables, hand sanitizer pretty much in every single corner. And then out here they're greeted with this portal here. So the reactions, again, some people are a little hesitant. Others are very excited to try it out. And again, the the easiest thing is this button here. With the press of a button, it'll be activated. And again, this is completely optional. So they are told when they walk in, um, in case no employee is out here, 
there's this big sign right here, disinfecting portal, not required, which means optional. Press button to begin. And if you wanna do this, close eyes and mouth when passing. So we're gonna have the owner of Alamo Biscuit Co. and um, sanitizer to you, John Bill, walk through, walk <laughs> okay, us through. Yeah, for sure. And again, closing your eyes and mouth when passing. And this has been here at Alamo Biscuit Co for a few days now, and this is just gonna be a five second quick process. And you see you got the 360 spray there. And it's that simple. <laughs> what has been the reaction from people and businesses especially? It's been very good actually. Uh, businesses, I've been reaching out, a lot of big companies, schools, government agencies. Uh, they just keep asking questions. A lot of them, just, uh, they, they're intrigued by the product. Um, they ask what's inside it. Uh, I let them know that it's the solution that we use is completely up to the customer. Uh, I'm using a chlorine dioxide base, uh, so a chlorine based solution. Um, so it's completely safe for your skin. We just recommend you cl close your eyes and your mouth. And you mentioned that perhaps this could be the future of restaurants, of schools, of businesses to have something like this outside. I, I think it's a great uh, uh, extra precautionary measure. Uh, being a business owner, I think our number one priority is uh, safety, right? So we want to protect our customers, we want to protect our employees as well. So it's a great option, in my opinion. Awesome. John, thank you so much thank for you. being with us this morning. Again, this product, it is customized with <laughs> Alamo Biscuits Company's logo, but they can customize to other businesses, and it's owned by sanitizer to you. So if you head over to ksat.com, we have an article now that talks more about this product. Again, and this is completely optional for those that do want to press that button and get a five-second full-body spray down. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Time now, 942, 79 degrees out. Still ahead, knowing what kind of face mask you should be using during the pandemic. We'll tell you which ones are said to be the most effective. Plus, a teacher going above and beyond how she's making sure her students are succeeding in and outside the classroom. But first, let's take a look outside with live cam. 79 degrees, almost 80 degrees. It is warming up out there, but we may not hit triple digits today, so that's good news. And our Sarah Spivey will be talking about, Sarah, you're talking about the, the stuff in the sky later? All right. Well, during this pandemic, students, teachers, and families have had so many more obstacles put in their path. We caught up with one local teacher who has gone above and beyond literally the extra miles to make sure her students are okay. And Max, you did this story. I did this story, but I have to give credit to our director, Robert Flowers. He's actually working today. We were just having a candy conversation and oh, there, there's some video of him. Uh, and he said he was so impressed by a teacher of his, his son, basically how she drove 18 miles on her day off just to make sure that students were well fed. And we caught up with her, Miss Carmen Alvarado, and she is Honestly, she is what every teacher should strive to be. She was fun, she was enthusiastic, and at first she was a little shy, but once we got into the classroom, she became so alive, and she was talking about science with such passion, and I had to give it to her. As we were leaving, I, you know, I took her aside, and I was like, I want you to know that you are really making a difference in kids' lives. I mean, you could see the passion in her, her students' faces. You could hear the passion in her voice when she was talking about how she loves what she does, she loves her students, and she just wants them to be okay. Yeah, we're going through such a difficult time with schools right now, and I know teachers miss their students, students miss, miss their teachers. For, and so for a teacher to get you know, I, in, in her car and drive 18 miles just to make sure students are fed and okay, I mean, those are our heroes right there. Yeah, and this is all because of the pandemic, obviously. Can't talk pandemic without masks. You did a great story on demoing masks. Yeah, shout out to our producer, Alyssa Medina, who, who put this story together. Um, so basically, she talked to medical professionals about all right, which masks work the best? And, you know, it's all to stop the, the spraying of the water droplets that spread COVID-19. And they literally broke down, you know, cloth masks, you know, only spray two and a half inches with that protection. And they're saying even denim, to use denim um, as a protectant because it provides a lot of mm. those thick layers. There I am with all of my layers. <laughs> on. You can never be too safe. So if you're not sure if this mask is, going to be giving you enough protection, I just say 
add more layers on. Throw know? the face mask on. Throw the face mask on. Throw the goggles on. Just protect everything. <laughs> All right. Well, it's less than 80 degrees for now. Sarah Spivey, you are telling us it is only going to get hotter and hotter throughout the day. Yeah, it is. But the key is we may not get to 100 degrees today, which is nice. So we have had a triple digit heat wave across San Antonio and South Central Texas. Here's a look at the last 10 days or so. And as you can see, we've had eight consecutive days at or above 100 degrees. Our streak started on July 10th when we hit 103, and then we really maxed out on the 13th this past Monday when we hit 107. That's the hottest July temperature ever on record for San Antonio, and we've been cruising in the triple digits ever since. Yesterday, we got up to 101, but today, I think, I think, I think we'll stay below 100 degrees. And one of the reasons why is that heat dome has been pushed a little bit more to the north so that the main area of heat should be in the panhandle of Texas. Amarillo at 102 today and around San Antonio, low uh, mid to upper 90s. So it is still going to be hot, but we may just be able to avoid that triple digit number. Another thing to note is that we've had a, a wiggle in the atmosphere that has pushed that upper level high further to the north, and it's also going to allow for a few showers and storms down near Laredo, down toward the RGV, and along the coastal plain as well. So Beeville, Victoria, Hallettsville, Carn City, you all have a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms today. Here in San Antonio, one or two of those isolated showers may make it to the I-35 corridor, so we're going to call it a 10% chance for a very brief pop-up shower or potentially storm around San Antonio. Only 10%. That's it. Keep that in mind. Everything uh, that we're going to be dealing with today really boils down to the heat. We're going to be hot, high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s, 96 at JBSA Randolph, 96 at Stone Oak, 95 for the high in Holotus, even in Bernie, 92 for the high temperature, right around San Antonio, 97. So if you want to enjoy some outdoors time, do it right now. It's 79 degrees, although... You know, temperatures are in the 70s. It's still fairly humid out there. Mostly sunny. Uh, dew points are in the 70s, so yeah, it, it is humid. 82 degrees in Del Rio. It's 75 for the wake up temperature in Rock Springs. 80 in Catula. 81 in Carrizo Springs. 82 in Beeville. 83 in Gonzales. And 81 in New Braunfels. Breaking it down for you. Still in the 80s uh, into the late morning hours, 90 degrees right around noon, and then in the afternoon topping off at 97. We'll carry that 10% chance for a stray coastal shower. Southeast winds today at 5 to 15 miles per hour, cooling back down into the 80s by 10 o'clock. Got to talk about some Saharan dust that is going to be out there today, but it's not going to be like a few weeks ago where it was very visible and it was really affecting our allergies. That's not going to be the case today. It's a light layer of Saharan dust and in fact it's going to dissipate fairly quickly. If you are unusually sensitive to air quality, you may have to avoid being outdoors today. The air quality is only going to be moderate, which is just about a two on a scale of one to six. A few weeks ago, we were at unhealthy levels. So the Saharan dust layer is not that bad today, and it is going to dissipate as we head into the rest of the week. Speaking of the rest of the week, fairly similar weather just about every day. Highs in the mid to upper 90s, a few coastal showers possible, but nothing here in San Antonio of substantial value, except for potentially Friday when we could see some scattered, uh, isolated to scattered showers and storms. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for that. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. 951, 79 degrees out. Making the best of your summer vacation by going on a family road trip. After the break, we have a beginner's guide to your RV needs. You know, you can't go to the amusement parks. You can't go to the zoos right now. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to camp. So Karen and Mark Zohofsky are road tripping it this summer in their RV trailer. We absolutely do love going with our grandkids. We're leaving this weekend. That's all they've been talking about. And they'll have company. Some RV dealerships have seen a 170% surge in sales, many first timers. When people are looking to get out of the house, a motorhome allows you to do that while maintaining social distancing. It even allows you to avoid some places that you may feel less comfortable, such as staying at a hotel or going to restaurants. With an RV, you bring it all with you. There are two types of RVs to consider, a motorhome that combines living quarters and a vehicle in one, or a travel trailer. Motorhome can be expensive to buy. A travel trailer is a more affordable option. 
Now, of course, you're going to need a tow vehicle. Larger fifth wheel style trailers will require a heavy duty pickup to tow. Smaller trailers like pop-ups can be towed by most SUVs or even a car with a hitch. These are easier on gas and you can get in one starting at about 10 grand. If you want to try before you buy, rent. This company, RV Share, works sort of like Airbnb. They say business is booming, that bookings are up 1600% since April. RVing has become a summer solution. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, we're going to show this video again of last night's light show at about 2 o'clock in the morning. What we have decided to make an educated guess is space junk. So it's uh, one of the thousands of objects that's orbiting the Earth in low Earth orbit, such as decommissioned satellites or uh, rocket stages that have fallen into the atmosphere, kind of parallel and burned over a long period of time. And so, yeah, pretty neat. Again, around 2 a.m. Thank you, Aaron, for sending in that video. Very interesting. If you have videos, you can send them into our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Today, going to be hot. We'll be up to 97 degrees in the afternoon with only an isolated shower storm along the coast possible. Uh, but other than that, it's just going to be hot, guys, in the days ahead. All right. Hi, I'm David Elder, and this is Texas Eats. Today's episode is all about big, juicy burgers. This is so good. I'm traveling around Loop 1604 looking for hot off the grill burgers and delicious deep fried sides. We're cruising inside six restaurants packed with unique burgers, and some are the size of Texas. Oh my gosh. And we're grilling with HEB sharing a burger recipe made with barbacoa and Big Red. on today's burger journey is at an iconic Texas burger joint. When you think of an iconic burger bite in San Antonio, you want something, a little bit of Tex-Mex, a little bit of barbecue, and a classic burger bite. And that's what they got out here at Longhorn Cafe. Place has been around since 1985, serving up delicious burgers. Let's go inside and check it out. With me right here is Paul Weir. He's a partner out here at Longhorn Cafe. And right in front of us is all the delicious food that you can get on the menu. You got the sides, you got the burgers, and you actually have a new burger that you're gonna be showing us right now. Yeah, this is our Bold Beaumont Barbecue Burger. Great it burger. Looks absolutely incredible. We just got voted Best Onion Rings in San Antonio, hand breaded. This is the combo. When you come out, you got to try the best onion rings in San Antonio, and you got to try this new burger. People love Longhorn Cafe. You ask them, what's the best burger spot in San Antonio? Guarantee you, eight out of 10 people, they're going to drop the Longhorn Cafe. It's just iconic. We now have 18 burgers and nine locations and building our 10th. This is a great blessing. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a good burger, man. This that is, is a solid, home, man. It's a home run, brother. Oh, my gosh. That tastes like you're eating a, like a barbecue sandwich. There you go. That's what we want. Crispy bacon, which nobody wants chewy bacon. Nope. You got the perfect little piece of the onion in there as well. Nice crispy on the outside. And the patty itself, great flavor. It's a special formulation we had done uh, with Friedman Meats out of Dallas. We tend to go to the juicier side. Oh, yeah. Fresh, never frozen. Fresh, and then never the buns. frozen. Look at that. They have like sourdough bun. We put it on the grill. It's so good when you get all that juice to get absorbed into the bun just makes it for a better whole mouthfeel. Barbecue sauce in itself has its own little special place in my heart. Really, I mean, I bet you there's a lot of barbecue sauce somewhere in my heart. But the Bold Beaumont out here, it's packed with barbecue sauce, packed with flavor, and it has the pickles in there, which are essential for cutting through all that sauce and all that fat flavor you get from barbecue and creating the perfect ultimate barbecue burger bite. And the burgers here, super juicy, and the buns are toasted perfectly. They're a home run. We want this one to taste like a nacho on a burger. So it comes with our jalapeno cheddar bun, seasoned tortilla strips, grilled jalapenos, and then we coat it in queso cheese. <laughs> yeah, I know. How can we go over the top? Over the top. Over Push the, the top. <laughs> That's the bite right there. Look at this thing. Here we go. Not good? That's just great flavor. Another, you get texture, you get the cheese, you get the crunch. Yeah, I'll see you later. It's creamy. Yeah, and that this good? This is like insane. And then the bread itself is like a sponge holding in all that flavor. 
the queso on there is really, really good. And the fresh tomato slice. Yes. This is by far one of the best burgers in San Antonio. Thank you. I, I love this right that. here. Everything about this is amazing. Isn't that good? You want something a little spicy, but you want it to have a lot of flavor. You got to get the Macho Nacho Burger. This thing has the jalapeno buns. It has the queso on there and these little chips that taste like Fritos on there. So you got the crunch, you got the flavor, and then you have the fresh tomatoes to cut through there that kind of resemble like a pico de gallo. It's like the ultimate Tex-Mex burger bite. This is the one that when you come in, you want just a solid bacon cheeseburger. There you go. You get the big juicy. Yeah, it's our formulated patty. Comes with mayonnaise and mustard on the bottom. Uh, bacon and cheese. We use it a sharp cheddar cheese, a sharp American, so it melts real well. And then lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise on the top. Pickle and onion. Everything is cut fresh. We cut our own tomatoes. We slice our own onions. Again, the patties are never frozen. The way you toast that bread on the grill makes all the difference. Bacon, cheese, hamburger, put it all together, a classic burger bite. The onions, the mustard, the mayonnaise, the tomatoes, the lettuce, the bacon that's cooked perfectly, nice and crispy, all together with that melted cheese on the juicy patty. You got to come experience it if you've never had it. It'll change your life. Longhorn Cafe, you guys are killing it. And we're at the original location. But this is the original. It, it tastes, it feels like home in here. It is very home. A home with really good burgers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's how we a, want you to feel. That's right, Paul. You rock, man. Thank you so Appreciate much for having it. us out here. Thanks for coming out. I'm going to take a bite out of this. Enjoy. Big I juicy. don't know where else you're going to put all that stuff. <laughs> mm. Oh, good one. Wrong. So glad you came out. Yeah, man, that's delicious. That's awesome. Now, we're traveling to the Texas Hill Country to go inside a burger spot serving up a crazy huge cheeseburger. This is Bobby J's, a burger joint that's called the Texas Hill Country home for 20 years. We're gonna see what they're serving up, but I heard they have a crazy pizza burger combo that I gotta try. Now we're inside Bobby J's with me right here as Lena Campos. Now you are the doer of everything inside <laughs> of this building. You do it all. Pretty much. Pretty much. And right in front of us, three different burgers. They all look delicious, unique in their own special way. Two sides. Now we're gonna talk about this first one right here because I haven't seen a burger like this anywhere especially in San Antonio. Talk to me about what's going on. This is our pizza burger. It is actually very different. It is our ground chuck and it's topped with mozzarella, pepperoni, <laughs> marinara. We dusted it with some Parmesan cheese to finish it off. So it's like an actual pizza. And a, bur and a burger. <laughs> and a burger. <laughs> yeah. A pizza and a burger got together. This is what happened. Yep. I got to take a bite out of this. Pizza burger is exactly what you want it to be. It's a pizza on a burger and it's done so well. It's very simple, straightforward, marinara, mozzarella cheese, you got pepperonis on there, it's ooey, it's gooey, and that chuck patty just sings through the whole thing. The toasted buns really make it taste like it's an actual pizza. It's pizza on a burger and it's so good. <laughs> marinara is on point, slightly sweet, and it pairs really well with that chuck meat because you got a lot of that, that salt, the pepper that you're putting right yeah. on the grill, a little S&P. This is a really, really good burger, and I, I think it's one of the most unique burgers that we've come across so awesome. far. This is really good. I'm taking another bite. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Pizza burger, absolutely delicious, but this one right here, this is like a big old burger. Talk to me it what's is. on it. So this is our jalapeno cheddar burger. It's probably one of our most popular, and we went ahead and threw some bacon on for you, but it is our ground chuck with cheddar cheese, a whole bunch of jalapenos, mayo, lettuce, tomato, onion, and pickle. It's how we typically dress most of our burgers. <clears throat> That just sounds good. Yeah. Well, here we go. And look at the size of this thing. That's a big old burger. That's actually our small third pound. <laughs> I love it. Here we, we go. Oh, a, oh, oh. We also have, it's okay, go. I gotcha. We yeah. also have a half pound, a one pound, and then we have our Godzilla. Every great burger spot has to have the quintessential Texas burger, and the jalapeno cheddar cheeseburger with bacon is exactly that. It's the ultimate burger bite. You got the jalapenos, which give you the little bit of pickling vinegar that's gonna help create almost like a dressing on the burger. The crispy bacon, the cheddar cheese that's melted perfectly on top of the patty, the toasted buns, and then the lettuce and tomatoes. The fresh produce really make this one of the best burger bites you can get around 1604. That is just a good, straightforward burger. These jalapenos make the burger. 
because they're cutting through, they're spicy, but they're pickled, so the vinegar helps really bring all the flavors together. It's like, it almost creates a little dressing on the burger that you really, that it, it just helps coat everything. And the bacon has a really nice crisp on the outside. Y'all know what you're doing, this is really good. Now what's going on with this third burger over here? Looks like it got a little extra sauce on it. It does, this is probably one of our most unique burgers. This has raw sauce. It was actually invented by an old employee named Joey Ross that used to work here. It's a twist on a barbecue sauce. So it's a barbecue base with our ground beef and then we top it with some really yummy grilled onions, hmm. bacon, American cheese and pickles. The Western Burger is a play on a traditional barbecue burger. You have the house-made sauce, which is called the Ross sauce. It's fun, it's tangy, it's a little play on that barbecue flavor, but then you also have the onions on there, and then everything else really just shines through. It's a great bite, and the pickles really help sell that barbecue flavor. Okay. It's like barbecue. <laughs> that sauce is really, really good. Mm. Great barbecue flavor on there. You want the pickle bite on this, the onions on there, the bacon, the cheese. And once again, a simple burger, done right, no fuss to it. You want some barbecue flavor, you want a burger, you got it right here. The toasted buns, the bread is unique in itself. Talk to me about the buns you guys have. So we get our bread delivered every day from Flowers Baking Company and everything's fresh daily. We toast our buns and we butter them and toast them on our grill before every burger that goes out. Now, if a regular burger ain't your fancy and you need something a little bit bigger, <laughs> Guess we what? Got they got you covered out here. We this do. is a five pound burger? Yeah, five pounds once it's all dressed out. And if you want to add cheese to it, it's going to probably be another half pound. Oh my gosh. This is a burger challenge. Yeah. If you're looking for like a big food, if you're into that kind of burger challenge thing, you can get the five pound burger out here. It's called the Godzilla Burger. It I is. love the name of it. And if you finish it in how long, you, you get it for free? 15 minutes. So the <laughs> burger itself, it's been done several times, believe it or not. The burger itself is $32. And if you finish it in 15 minutes or less, you get your picture taken. And you also get all of your money back. I have no idea who would be able to finish this burger, but there are people that have finished it. So there you go. If you or yourself, you know anybody that is down to do a burger challenge, I dare you to come out here and try to do this five pound burger challenge. If you eat it in 15 minutes, you get it for free. If you don't, you still get to eat a big old burger and why not? You can share it, it's, it's wild looking and it looks like it's gonna be great on social media as well. It's like a win-win for everyone. You also have two sides right in front of us. You have your french fries and deep fried jalapenos. You call them your bottle caps, ranch dressing, you can't go wrong with anything on the menu out here. Yeah. The pizza burger, quite possibly one of my favorite burgers that I've had, really unique, and it's just done right. And if you're looking for something huge, they got you covered on a regular huge burger and a five pound burger. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank having you. us out here. I'm gonna try to take this to go. I'm gonna just see how quickly I can eat this at home. Is you that go cool? Go ahead. Okay. Take it. <laughs> Coming up on Texas Eats, we're traveling to a restaurant that's deep frying ice cream and putting it on a burger. And later on the show, I take you inside a restaurant that's secretly serving some of the tastiest burgers around. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.